please to kindly guide the parents to come and occupy the front seats. Ivatina Karekramada live Nama Vere Auditorium Al Kudan Adita LED screen al play after the Illi comfortable illa and the Ali Kuda seat na occupy Mar Bohudu. It was under request. Even in a car, a crumb of the Vishisha, Elrigo Gutte, Tamamakala Vidya Biasa Bosha, second PUC, Ano Yudhavana Muxi, parents, oh, one the Nirala Bhavana, Taladidare, Yakin Theladre, Bosha, one the worship the Livid Hartigal Esh to Kasta Patertaro, other Yeradras to Kasta parents Patertare, our Avodi Kebeka Guanta Yella Sahakaravana, parents, our Jote Jotege, your sacrifice Kuda Erate, Hangagi. A one the Hantavana Dati, colorful marks non the gave with the article over to PS University Walgade, entrapped the Hangagi Adondo, Sambramada Shanagado. I can see that happiness in the faces of parents. Adrujotege, Yudavana, Gedirwanta, Bhava, one the Sartaka Bhava Nama with the article of Mukadali, Kantirudu, Sulala, Mate, E. Sadhane, Samanyavagi Dakuanta Dalla, Sakash to Tayari, Sakash to. Uh, sacrifices irate idrhinde hagagi ps olgade enter agidare ant heladre vidyarthigalu samanya dorantu kandita alla pratiyobru kuda 90 95 98 tagondiruvanta vidyarthigale illella irodu hagagi idu sambradakshana sambramadakshana nimugu mattu namagu ps samsthe shikshana kshetra dalli tanna de adantha chaapanna modisiruvanta samsthe PSG Iga Ivatu Varshagala Suvarana Sambrahma Ivatu Varshagalu Hagagi Ivarsha Nama Samstage Seruta Arvanta Vidharti Galu Nama Ivatane Varshada Vidharti Galu Hangagi Golden Jubilee Celebration Hangagi Nivelaru Golden Batch Hangagi Nivelarigu Nano Swagatavana Bayestine KG2 PG and Taidi, the KG2 PhD Vaga. PS Samseli Hatu Halavaru Samstegado Kalasavana Martaide SSM School, PS PU College, PS PU Evening College, PS Degree College, PS Degree College Evening, PS College of Pharmacy, PS Medical College, PS Polytechnic College. PS Engineering College, Hige, Patti Baliuta, Hogua, PS Samstege, Aru Kadegala Litana Campus, Hide, Hachan Campus, Nama Hanmantanagara Campus, RR Campus, Ivatuni Vella Ili Assembla Giruadunama, RR Campus, EC Campus, Electronic City Campus, Kupam Campus, Chittor Campus, Hige, Patti Baliuta, Sagua, PS Nelly, Arvata Ku Hechu, Course Galive, Ipata Idu Savareko Hechu with Hartigalunama, PS Samste Lidare. PS Samsthe Makalige Vidya Biasa the Jote Jotege Kelvu Samskara Matu Samskriti and Nahail Kodate Mukhivagi Nala Kana Nawila Vidhyarti Galige Kandit Wagyu Hail Kodave Mudulne do Be truthful to yourself Sadhya Adashtu Nimatanavana Uliskoli and Nodu Mudulne Dadre Yerene do respect women at any cost. Sari Hogli Lan Theradre as Jaga bit Horadi in the Vidhartha Gala Hel Kurtave Hortu, never talk anything wrong about women. Respect women and Aduna Yerenedu. Moor Nedu Yaude Kelasa Madve Kadre, Vidhartha Gala gave on the Sandik the Stiti, confusion and Adu Yavaglu Erate. Hagagi Athra Stiti Bandaga Nimana won the Prashne Kel Kodi in the now Sada Helteve. Yena do Prashne Andre, Nanu e Kelsa Madre. Amma Kushi Partala, Atwa Dukka Partala Anta, Kel Koli Prashne, Ilanani Kelsa Madre, Amma Bada Kushi Partala and the Ansadre, Akalsavana David to Madi, Yelli Nimge, Nani Kelsa Madre, Amma Bahara Dukka Partala, Kandal Nir Barat and Sato, Anta Kelsavana Madbedi. This is the judging decision, in decision, a judgment like Eruanta Vandu Sadhana. You ask yourself another Nahel Kurtivi, Nalak Nedu, there is no shortcut to the success. Kashta Patte mail barbeke hortu, yaw the shortcut in the mail barak sadhya illa, nudu, PS thana illa vidhartigali kalsuanta, samskara matu, samskruti.
ನಮ್ಮ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ಗಳ ಒಂದು ಮುನ್ನೋಟವನ್ನು ಪರದೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಈಗ ನಾವು ನೋಡಲಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಟೀಮ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇ ದ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು
ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ತನ್ನ ಐವತ್ತನೇ ವರ್ಷದ ಸುವರ್ಣ ಸಂಭ್ರಮದ ಅಂಚಿನಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಇದುವರೆಗೂ ಲಕ್ಷಾಂತರ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳನ್ನು ಗಣ್ಯ ನಾಗರಿಕನನ್ನಾಗಿಸಿದೆ ಪ್ರಪಂಚದ ಮೂಲೆ ಮೂಲೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ನಮ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಉನ್ನತ ಸ್ಥಾನವನ್ನು ಅಲಂಕರಿಸಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವುದು ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಕೆಲವೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಂದ ಪ್ರಾರಂಭವಾದಂಥ ಪಿ ಇ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಒಂದು ವ್ಯಾಯಾಮ ಶಾಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂದರೆ ಜಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ತನ್ನ ಮೊದಲನೇ ಹುಟ್ಟನ್ನು ಪಡೆಯತ್ತೆ ಕೇವಲ ಕೆಲವೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಂದ ಶುರುವಾದಂಥ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ಸಾವಿರಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ವಿದ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಸವನ್ನು ಪಡೀತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳೋದು ನಮ್ಮ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾಪಕ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರು ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಂ ಆರ್ ದೊರೆಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಅವರು ಅವರು ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಲ ಮಾತಾಡುವಾಗ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳನ್ನು ಉದ್ದೇಶಿಸಿ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಬೆಳೆದಂಥ ಬೆಳೆ ಬಾಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅಂದರೆ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಜನೆ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ನಯ ವಿನಯತೆಯನ್ನು ಕಲಿಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಜನೆ ಕೇವಲ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಇರುವಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗಷ್ಟೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಥವಾ ಹಣ ಇರುವಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗಷ್ಟೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಶಾಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಸ ಮಾಡುವಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಅದೇ ಮಟ್ಟದ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಸ ದೊರೀಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಒಂದು ನೂರೈವತ್ತಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಶಾಲೆಗಳನ್ನ ದತ್ತು ಪಡೆದು ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನವ ನವೀನ ಕಟ್ಟಡವನ್ನು ಕಂಪ್ಯೂಟರ್ ಲ್ಯಾಬ್ಗಳನ್ನು ಲೈಬ್ರರಿಗಳನ್ನು ನವೀಕರಿಸಿಕೊಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಹಾಗೂ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಇದೇ ಸಭಾಂಗಣದಲ್ಲಿ ನೂರೈವತ್ತಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳನ್ನು ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಶಾಲೆಯ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳನ್ನು ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮೇಳಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಕರೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ವಿ ಆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಕನಸುವನ್ನು ಬಿತ್ತುವಂಥ ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನು ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಮೇಳ ಮಾಡಿತ್ತು ಈ ಇಂಥ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಕೂಡ ಓದ್ಬೋದು ಈ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಹಣಕಾಸು ಆಗಲಿ ನನ್ನ ರಿಸರ್ವೇಶನ್ ಆಗಲಿ ಅಥವಾ ನನ್ನ ಇನ್ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಮುಖ್ಯ ಆಗಲ್ಲ ಓದಿದರೆ ಇಂಥ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಕೂಡ ಬರಬಹುದು ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಮನೋಭಾವ ಆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಲಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾವು ನೂರೈವತ್ತು ಶಾಲೆಗಳು ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಶಾಲೆಗಳ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳನ್ನು ಈ ಸಭಾಂಗಣಕ್ಕೆ ಬರಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಹಲವಾರು ಅವರ ಪ್ರಾಯೋಗಿಕವನ್ನು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಿ ತೋರಿಸಲಾಗಿತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಬಹಳ ಹುಮ್ಮಸ್ಸಿನಿಂದ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಪಾಲ್ಗೊಂಡಿದ್ರು ಅದೊಂದು ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಆಯಿತು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ನಿಜಕ್ಕೂ ನನಗೆ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆಯ ವಿಷಯ ನಾನು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ವಿಷಯ ಹೇಳೋದು ಮರ್ತಿದ್ದೆ ಈ ಸಭಾಂಗಣವನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದಾಗ ನನಗೆ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಪರಿಚಿತ ಮುಖಗಳು ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ನಾನು ಅಂದ್ಕೊಂಡೆ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಹಳೇ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ನಮ್ಮ ಎಚ್ ಎನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಂಥ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಯು ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿಗೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರ ಪೋಷಕರು ಕಾಣ್ತಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಚ್ ಎನ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ಸಿಂದ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿದ್ದರೆ ಒಂದು ಚಪ್ಪಾಳೆ ಮೂಲಕ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಇರುವನ್ನು ನನಗೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ತಿಳಿಸ್ಕೊಡಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಇವತ್ತು ಮೊದಲನೇ ವರ್ಷದ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳ ಇನಾಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಜೊತೆ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಾವು ತಮ್ಮ ಸಾಧನೆಯ ಮೂಲಕ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಅಂಕಗಳನ್ನ ಪಡೆದಿರುವಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಪುರಸ್ಕಾರವನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಇದೊಂಥರ ಹೊಸ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಇದೊಂದು ಇಂಡಿಕೇಶನ್ ನಾಳೆ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮಾರ್ಕ್ಸನ್ನು ತೊಗೊಂಡು ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟಾಪರ್ ಆಗಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಬೇಕು ನೀವು ಆ ಪುರಸ್ಕಾರವನ್ನು ಸ್ವೀಕರಿಸಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋ ಉದ್ದೇಶದಿಂದ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾಧನೆ ಮಾಡಿದಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಂಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಸೀನರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರು ಕೂಡ ನಮ್ಮ ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಬಂದು ಈ ಪುರಸ್ಕಾರವನ್ನು ಸ್ವೀಕರಿಸಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಪ್ರತಿಭೆ ಎನ್ನುವುದು ಭೌತಿಕ ಕ್ಷಿತಿಜವನ್ನು ವಿರ ವಿಸ್
ಅಜ್ಞಾನದ ಕತ್ತಲೆಯಿಂದ ಬೆಳಕಿನೆಡೆಗೆ ಕರೆದೊಯ್ಯುವ ಶಕ್ತಿಯೇ ಗುರು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಟೀಚರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ರೋಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಹೇಳ್ತಿರ್ತೀವಿ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅವರ ಸರಿ ತಪ್ಪುಗಳನ್ನು ತಿದ್ದಿ ಅವರನ್ನು ಸರಿ ದಾರಿಗೆ ಕರೆದುಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗುವಂಥ ಗುರುತರ ಜವಾಬ್ದಾರಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೇಲಿರುತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅವರ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆ ಹೆಜ್ಜೆಯಲ್ಲೂ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸು ಜೊತೆಲಿರ್ತೀರಾ ಸರಿ ಆದರೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಸಮಯವನ್ನು ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆ ಕಳೀತಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅವರನ್ನು ತಿದ್ದುವ ಕೆಲಸ ಆದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ ನಾವು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತೀವಿ ಅವರ ಸರಿ ತಪ್ಪು ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನು ಸರಿ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಬೆಂತಟ್ಟಿ ಶಭಾಷ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಮುಂದೆ ಕಳಿಸ್ತೇವೆ ತಪ್ಪು ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ಇದು ತಪ್ಪಲ್ವಾ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವರನ್ನು ತಿದ್ದುವಂಥ ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನು ನಾವು ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆದವರು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತೇವೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಿರುವಂಥ ನಮ್ಮ ಎಲ್ಲ ಐದು ಸಾವಿರಕ್ಕೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಅಧ್ಯಾಪಕ ವೃಂದಕ್ಕೆ ನಾನು ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಎಮ್ ಸಿಯ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಅಭಿನಂದನೆಯನ್ನು ಸಲ್ಲಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ಇನ್ನು ಕೇವಲ ಹತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷದಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಶುರುವಾಗಲಿದೆ ನನಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತು ನೀವುಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಒಂಬತ್ತು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಬಂದು ಆಸೀನರಾಗಿದ್ರಿ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ನಮ್ಮ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಬೇಸರ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತು ಆದರೆ ಒಂದಂತೂ ಅಡ್ವಾಂಟೇಜ್ ಒಂಬತ್ತು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ಒಂಬತ್ತುವರೆಗೆ ಬಂದಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪೋಷಕರು ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಮುಂಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಹಿಂದೆ ತಿರುಗಿ ನೋಡಿ ಪಾಪ ಲೇಟಾಗಿ ಬಂದಂಥ ಕೆಲವು ಪೋಷಕರು ಮತ್ತು ಇವರು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿಂದೆ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಬೇಗ ಬಂದಿದ್ದು ಡಿಸ್ಅಡ್ವಾಂಟೇಜ್ ಅಂತೂ ಆಗಲಿಲ್ಲ ಐ ಅಗ್ರಿ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಶುಗರ್ ಇದೆ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಇದೆ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ನೀವು ಒಂಬತ್ತು ಗಂಟೆ ಅಂದಿದ್ರಿ ನಾವು ಎಂಟುವರೆಗೆ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದಂಥ ಪೋಷಕರು ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಒಂದು ಸಣ್ಣ ಕ್ಷಮೆ ಇರಲಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಜನನ ಒಂದು ಅಂಗಳದಲ್ಲಿ ಸೇರಿಸುವ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಥರದ ಒಂದು ನಿರ್ಧಾರವನ್ನು ನಾವು ತೊಗೊಳ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಯಾಕೆಂದರೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಬಂದು ಕೂರಬೇಕಲ್ಲ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಶುರು ಆಗೋದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಲೇಟಾಗಿ ಬಂದ್ವಿ ಅಂತ ಬರ್ತಾನೆ ಇದ್ದರೆ ಅದು ಚೆಂದ ಕಾಣಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾವು ನಿಮಗೆ ಒಂದು ಅರ್ಧ ಗಂಟೆ ಬೇಗ ಬನ್ನಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ದಂತೂ ಸುಳ್ಳಲ್ಲ ಆದರೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಹತ್ತು ಹದಿನೈದಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರುವಾಗಲಿದೆ ಟು ಕೀಪ್ ಯು ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ದ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಫೋಟೋಸ್ ಫೈ ಯು ಇನ್ನು ಕೇವಲ ಹತ್ತು ನಿಮಿಷ ನಮ್ಮ ಜೊತೆಗಿರಿ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಇನ್ನೇನು ಶುರುವಾಗಲಿದೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೊ ಮಚ್ a very good morning ladies and gentlemen today we have gathered here for the inauguration and orientation orientation of first year classes for ug programs of computer application commerce design economics law management psychology and performing arts for the academic session 2023 and 24 we will be starting the inauguration and orientation for the academic year 2023 and 24 in next 10 minutes before that i would like to give you the brief program schedule of today's event we will have the dignitaries right today we are fortunate to have the chief guest shri vv lakshmi narayana sir cbi ex joint director retired additional dgp maharashtra professor dr m r doreswami ex mlc honorable chancellor ps university professor dr jawahar pro chancellor ps university dr j surya prasad sir vice chancellor ps university professor ajay kumar coo ps university and dr k shridhar registrar ps university to brief you a little bit on the merit scholarship at pes university the university has honored the meritorious students in the name of bharat ratna professor cnr rao and dr mrd scholarships pes university has given more than 40 crores of rupees to the deserving students since its inception non engineering streams accounts for more than 19 crores out of this 40 crores scholarship given so far since inception of ps university today also we have students receiving bharat ratna professor cnr rao scholarship and also dr mrd scholarship on this occasion the ps university founded by dr doreswami affectionately known as mrd is an educationally 
par excellence who has built and nurtured the ps group of institution for over three decades today ps group of institutions are offering higher education across the spectrum of engineering management law commerce design pharmacy and medical sciences under his dynamic leadership today ps group of institutions are offering quality education for more students supported by an able and competent staff of more than 15000 teaching professionals right we are very fortunate to have dr dore swami sir as our honorable chancellor of ps university ladies and gentlemen we will begin the session our orientation program in next 10 minutes i request all of you be please seated in your places thank you कार्यक्रम मुख्य अतिथि वेदिक कड़े बरता है हाँ ई रिक्वेस्ट आल देंट्स टू कीप दर् मोबाइल इन सैलेंट मोड गण्य वेदिक कड़े बेलू नि गौरव सूची अलक प्रार्थने बंदा ना निस्ते I request the audience to please raise a dignitary sir towards the dais. संस्थय संस्थापक अध्यक्ष नम इंत बहुत चिख हरिया एटी फै सो इज आज वे
and gentlemen please be ladies and gentlemen please give a, a big round of applause for our dignitaries <laughs> professor dr m r dore swami sir ex mla and honorable chancellor ps university the chief gift guest of the day shri v v lakshmi narayana cbi ex joint director retired additional dgp maharashtra professor d jawahar pro chancellor ps university dr j surya prasad vice chancellor ps university professor ajay kumar coo ps university dr k shridhar registrar ps university ladies and gentlemen give a big round of applause for the dignitaries गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरवे नम इंदु पी एस संस्थेली प्रथम वर्ष व्यार्थी प्रारंभोत्सव यु जि प्रोग्राम इन कंप्यूटर अप्लिकेशन कामर्स डिसन एकनमि ला मानेजमेंट सैकोलजी आंड पर्फार्मिंग आर्ट्स इशु कॉर्स इवतु उद्घाटना समारंभव ना नेरवेस्ता बंदी एल पोषकू व्यार्थी नम पी ए संस्थे परवा आदर स्वागत बयसते गुड मॉर्निंग वन एंड आल प्रेसेंट यो ई प्रोफेसर जय शेटी फ्रम फैकलटी ऑफ मैनेजमेंट आंड कामर्स आन बिहाफ आफ एंटर टीम आफ पी एस वेलकम यू आल टू द इनग्रेशन आंड ओरियंटेशन आफ फस्ट इयर क्लास UG programs of computer application commerce design economics law management psychology and performing arts for the academic session 2023 and 24 you are about to begin one of the most exciting journeys of your life and everyone in the university is looking forward to make your pesu experience a conducive one pesu is a special place known for its academic excellence value based education diversity serene campus and state of the art infrastructure the university is celebrating its golden jubilee this year marking five decades of education for real world the university is committed to providing education for the real world that inspires students to realize their potential it started as a dream of an extremely successful visionary our honorable chancellor dr m r doreswami sir to revolutionize the education system in india extending the vision of our respected chancellor sir our honorable pro chancellor professor jawahar doreswami sir's dynamic leadership has brought ps on the one of the most successful universities in india we also welcome our honorable vice chancellor professor dr surya prasad ji our ceo professor ajay kumar registrar dr k shridha and our dean professor dr shaila shri haridas prayer is an action it's a process of talking with god with an energy in order to achieve a purpose let us begin the most awaited session by seeking the blessings of the lord almighty with an invocation song by miss arundhati vashishta please mm. ah. 
ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ಪ್ರಮಥ ಗಣ ಸಂಪೂಜಿತ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ಪ್ರಮಥ ಗಣ ಸಂಪೂಜಿತ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಪೂಜಿತ ವರ ವಿನಾಯಕ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಪೂಜಿತ ವರ ವಿನಾಯಕ ಮನಸು ಮೀರಕರ ನೀಸದಿನ ಜಾತ ಮನಸು ಮೀರಕರ ನೀಸದಿನ ಜಾತ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನ ಸದ್ ಕೋ ಮಂಗಲ ಮುಕ್ತಿದಾಯಕ ಸಬ್ ಕೋ ಮಂಗಲ ಮುಕ್ತಿದಾಯಕ ಗೀತ ಮೇ ಸಂಗೀತ ಮೇ ಗೀತ ಮೇ ಸಂಗೀತ ಮೇ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ಗಾಯಿ ಗಣಪತಿ ಗಜಾನನ ನಾಗರಿಕತೆಯಷ್ಟೇ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆಯು ಪ್ರಾಚೀನ ಬೇಡುಕೆಗಷ್ಟೇ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆ ಸೀಮಿತವಲ್ಲ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಮನವಿ ಶರಣಾಗತಿ ಹೊಗಳಿಕೆ ಇವೆಲ್ಲ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆಯ ಮುಖಗಳು ಅ ವೆಲ್ ಬಿಗನ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಡನ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ತಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನೆಯ ಮೂಲಕ ಚಾಲನೆಯನ್ನು ನೀಡಿದಂತಹ ವರುಂಧತಿ ಅಸಿಷ್ಟ ವಸಿಷ್ಠ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಇನ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಕ್ರೋ ಕೋರ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ the commitment here is to foster an inclusive innovative and empowering academic environment that transforms life and shapes the brighter future for all i nivedita faculty of management and commerce take this privilege of welcoming the honorable vice chancellor ps university dr surya prasad j surya prasad j has completed his phd in computer engineering from florida atlantic university usa and prior to that he completed his mtech from mysore university and be in computer science and engineering from bangalore university before his role as vice chancellor of ps university he was a director and principal of ps institute of technology ec campus since 2005 Dr Surya Prasad also worked for eminent companies such as Motorola in Florida USA and Cadence Design Systems California USA he has participated and presented more than 20 research papers across the world besides holding two important patents his professional affiliation includes life member of Indian Institute of Techno- uh, Technical Engineers member of computer society of india inception mentor at cadbron automation and entrepreneurial startup his research interest includes machine learning and deep learning embedded system design and verification methodologies with deep gratitude i take this privilege of welcoming the honorable vice chancellor ps university dr surya prasad j to address the gathering sir Thank you, Madam. Hello, Namaskar. A very good morning. If I say we are overwhelmed to see the turnout today, it would be undoubtedly an understatement. The outset, not to sound like a word of thanks, but I think thank you very much. I do understand it's a Sunday. 
but it's so important that the education of our wards kind of surpasses all our other engagements. I can see the kind of interest and the kind of, you know, encouragement that's there from the parents for the next generation to ensure that they get the right kind of education. In fact, it's my huge pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to today's program, which is basically made up of two components. One is going to be the inauguration, wherein the luminaries on the stage are going to share some of their experiences of life and trying to give some insights about what to expect and what not to, not just in your program of study, but from their life experience as to what to expect in life. During this particular event too, there's going to be a small recognition, as you're all aware. PES profoundly promotes quality education. Recognizing some of these students who have done exceedingly well academically, there are scholarships that are given out. Though there are thousands of students who receive, that is actually 20% of our total student population, that is about 4,000 of them who receive. As a small gesture, there's going to be about less than 20 students who are going to be recognized on stage. I'd like to inform the August gathering that these students would be receiving 25% of their tuition fee per semester in case it's going to be CNR Rao, 20% of their tuition fee per semester in case it's going to be Dr. MRD scholarship. And what else would it be? a greater achievement when you're going to be receiving some of these rewards that is from Dr. Emari the scholarship from the founder himself, Dr. Emma Dore Swami, who is present here today. After the inauguration program, there is going to be an orientation program wherein you'll all get to know what to expect from PES and what PES expects, not just from the students, but the parents who are also going to be the major pillars in ensuring the shape of these students' career is going to be according to their expectations. The UG programs today include computer applications, BCom, Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Economics, Bachelor of Law programs, Bachelor of Management, which has business analytics, sports management, and hotel and event management. We also have programs, students are pursuing psychology and performing arts. So invariably this is a huge gathering. These are undoubtedly not just courses where in gone are those days people would only look at computer science or maybe engineering or medical to be professions. These are all professional programs wherein there are tremendous amount of career opportunities. So I would like to first of all congratulate all those students who have got admissions into their programs of study and also congratulate the parents who have encouraged them, ensured all their commitment and the sacrifices that they have done is going to be reaching to another new level. I would just make a small introduction about the dignitaries on the dais. While they speak, you will surely understand and appreciate from where they come and what they bring onto the stage. This is a pretty heavily loaded stage, if I may say so. Quickly, to just tell you, I think we all need to be undoubtedly indebted to one person who single-handedly started somewhere in 1972, a great visionary, and see that particular People's Education Society grows to this particular stature is none other than our Chancellor, Dr. M. R. Dureswamy. <laughs> Sir, we are in fact very blessed to have you grace this particular occasion and share these thoughts with the next generations to come. His relentless efforts is what we do see PS to have grown to this particular stage. The chief guest for today's function by education as an engineer, but by profession as a police officer, 
but I think his inquisitiveness to detailing has made him a wonderful investigating officer on various cases. It's so difficult to see someone who has kind of traversed so many different disciplines in life and excelled in each one of them. It's an undoubtedly a role model. He has got so much to share and one of his main interests is to enthuse the next generation. When I was just going through his bio, I saw that he has addressed over 30 lakh students, over 3 million students across different geographies. So we are all looking forward to his address this morning. Sir, Sri Vivi Lakshmi Narayan, sir, thank you very much for accepting our invite and being present here. We look forward to your wisdom and the direction for the next generation. Since 1991, 92, close to about three plus decades, Professor Javar has been that leader who has ensured that the vision of the chancellor can be taken to next greater heights. It's so wonderful, not just in terms of the facility that we kind of continue to enjoy, but the vision that he has, trying to ensure that every student gets the right kind of opportunities to showcase their capability is something that he has been relentlessly doing for over three decades. Sir, thank you very much for being present here today. The orientation program is going to be championed by him, which has been doing for over three decades now. Professor Ajoy, the Chief Operating Officer of PES Group of Institutions, has worked in the U.S. for over two decades. He brings in not just that interaction, international exposure, but the true concern for every aspect that's being done in the PES Group of Institutions. Undoubtedly, PES Institution continues to grow with over about 20,000 plus students spread across about six different campuses offering various programs, but trying to ensure that every necessary component is addressed for all these programs is no menial task. Professor Ajoy is an undoubtedly a huge workaholic. We are so very grateful that he's a part of the PES Group of Institutions. A very warm welcome to Professor Ajoy, the Chief Operating Officer of PES Group of Institutions. These are people who continue to work in the background, will never come onto the foreground until unless you force them to come and share. We are very glad that he is sharing the stage today. Professor K. Sridhar, my colleague, my registrar of PES University, has put on close to about three and a half decades for the cause of education at PES University. A very warm welcome to Professor K. Sridhar, the registrar of PES University. I'm sorry, in case I've, I thought in case I'm blocking some of these people, Dean of the program of Faculty of Management and Commerce, Dr. Shailashri Haridas, an economist, business administration major, advisor to the law program and the psychology program, many such hats. Again, a tremendous workaholic. You will not find these kind of people everywhere who are so very dedicated and committed for the cause of education. In fact, at PES, we are so blessed to have this tremendous talent pool, not just on the stage, but off the stage, who make PES what it is today. I have a host of my faculty colleagues, various chairpersons of different departments, the deans, of different faculty of study, directors of programs of study. In fact, we have another packed audience in the Dr. MRD auditorium. We were kind of hoping that this should be able to house the entire audience this morning, but looking at this overwhelming response, again, a very warm welcome to one and all, and also to the people in the MRD auditorium. Let the pride of PES be with all of us and let that star or whatever you're looking for shine upon you so that you can find your career and what you aspire through PS. Thank you very much. And again, a warm welcome to one and all. Thank you.
ನಮ್ಮ ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರನ್ನ ಈ ಬೆಳಗಿನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸಿದಂತಹ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿಯ ವೈಸ್ ಚಾನ್ಸಲರ್ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸೂರ್ಯಪ್ರಸಾದ್ ಸರ್ ಅವರನ್ನ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ತನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುವ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರಲ್ಲೂ ಕೆಲವು ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರಗಳನ್ನ ಕಲಿಸುತ್ತದೆ ಇದು ತನ್ನ ಕೆಲಸದ ಬಗೆಗೆ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯಿಂದ ಹಿಡಿದ ಕನ್ನಡಿ ಕೂಡ ಹೌದು ತಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುವ ಎಲ್ಲ ಶ್ರೇಣಿಯ ಜನಗಳು ತಮ್ಮ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಮತ್ತು ಆ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಭಾಗವಾಗಿರುವುದರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಆತ್ಮಗೌರವವನ್ನ ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಬೆಳೆಸುತ್ತದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗಳು ದೊಡ್ಡ ದೊಡ್ಡ ರೀತಿ ರಿವಾಜುಗಳನ್ನ ನಿಭಾಯಿಸುತ್ತೇವೆನೋ ಸರಿ ಆದರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಪ್ರತಿನಿತ್ಯದ ಸಣ್ಣ ಪುಟ್ಟ ರೀತಿ ರಿವಾಜುಗಳನ್ನ ಸಹ ಬಹಳ ನಿಖರವಾಗಿ ದಕ್ಷತೆಯಿಂದ ನಿಭಾಯಿಸುತ್ತದೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ತಾನು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುತ್ತಿರುವ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ತನ್ನೊಬ್ಬ ವೈಯಕ್ತಿಕ ಉದ್ದೇಶಕ್ಕಾಗಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬದಲಾಗಿ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಒಟ್ಟು ಧ್ಯೇಯೋದ್ದೇಶಗಳಿಗಾಗಿ ಎನ್ನುವುದು ಅರಿವು ನಮ್ಮ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡುವ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ನಮ್ಮ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಬೆಳೆಸುತ್ತದೆ ಬೆಟ್ಟವೂ ನಿನ್ನದೆ ಬಯಲೂ ನಿನ್ನದೆ ಹಬ್ಬಿ ನಗಲಿ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ನೆಳಲೋ ಬಿಸಿಲೋ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ನಿನ್ನದೆ ಇರಲಿ ಏಕ ರೀತಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ದೀಪ ಬೆಳಗುವುದರ ಮೂಲಕ ಉದ್ಘಾಟಿಸಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲಿರುವಂತಹ ಗಣ್ಯರು I request dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp. Purudvam kalyanam, arogyam dhana sambada. Shubham purudvam kalyanam, arogyam dhana sambada. Shatru buddhi vinashaya, deepak chodhi. ಕರು ನಾಳು ಬಾ ಬೆಳಕೆ ಮುಸುಕಿದಿ ಮಬ್ಬಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಕೈ ಹಿಡಿದು ನಡೆಸೆಮ್ಮನು ಇರುಳು ಕತ್ತಲೆಯ ಗವಿ ಮನೆ ದೂರ ಕನಿಕರಿಸಿ ಕೈ ಹಿಡಿದು ನಡೆಸೆಮ್ಮನು ದೀಪ ಬೆಳಗುವುದರ ಮೂಲಕ ನಮ್ಮ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ವಿದ್ಯುಕ್ತ ಚಾಲನೆಯನ್ನು ನೀಡಿದಂತಹ ಎಲ್ಲ ಗಣ್ಯರಿಗೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಡಿಗ್ನಿಟ್ರೀಸ್ The PS University has honored the meritorious students in the name of Bharat Ratna Professor CNR Rao and Dr MRD scholarships. PS University has given more than 40 crores of rupees to the deserving students since its inception. Non-engineering streams accounts for more than 19 crores out of this. May I now request our chief guest Shri VV Lakshmi Narayana sir to present the Professor CNR Rao Scholarship. I now request the students to please come and collect the scholarship. Saura BH, Department of BBA, CNR Rao Scholarship with a CGPA of 9.54. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for the students who have got scholarship for this academic year. Peddi Sanjana, BBA Business Analytics, CNR Rao Scholarship for the CGPA of 10. Shravya Challa, BBA, Hotel and Event Management, CNR Rao Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.28. Netra R, BCom, CNR Rao Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.24. Yellar Ananya, ACCA, 
CNR of scholarship for the CGPA of 9.44. Shavi Jain, Design and Performing Art, CNR of Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.77. Varshita S, BBA LLB, CNR of Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.42. Shrishti NM, BBA LLB, CNR Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.5. Congratulations to all the students and thank you so. We are privileged to have Sri Vivi Lakshmi Narayana sir as our chief guest of the day. Sir is a CBI ex joint director and retired additional DGP Maharashtra. We will now have a video introduction of Sir's early life and career. Video, please. an exceptional individual whose life journey has been nothing short of extraordinary. J.D. Lakshmi Narayana sir with his unwavering commitment to upholding the law led him to attain the prestigious position of additional director general of police in the vibrant city of Mumbai Maharashtra. He was born on 3rd April 1965 in Kadapa district, Andhra Pradesh. He did his Bachelor of Technology at NIT Varangal and did M.Tech from IIT Madras. Sir was among the toppers in the 1990 batch of civil services, but he chose IPS instead of IAS. In 2006, he was honored with the Indian Police Medal. He is remembered for his stint in Maharashtra anti-terrorist squad. He is well known for leading the investigations, namely OMC scandal, MI properties, Bias Jagan Mohan Reddy case, Satyam scandal and disproportionate assets case and many more. Throughout his illustrious tenure in the domain of law enforcement, Sir has exemplified the true essence of dedication and integrity. But what truly sets Sir apart is his exceptional investigative prowess and remarkable leadership skills. Sir has adopted villages in order to show his commitment to voluntarily prohibit alcohol. Sir with unwavering determination has left an indelible mark on the domains of law enforcement and public service. His journey has been nothing short of inspiring and his commitment to justice will continue to guide and influence us for generations to come. We, on behalf of PES University, are honored to welcome Honorable Mr. J.D. Lakshmi Narayana to the inaugural ceremony of the Batch of 2023. Thank you. The honor of having you as a chief guest uplifts the spirit of this occasion, sir. May I now request you to address the gathering. Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki Bharat Mata Ki now I ask the students, who is Bharat Mata? We all said JJ cars to Bharat Mata. So who is this Bharat Mata? I want responses from the students. Is it the rivers we have? Or is the mountains we have? Or is the land what we have? Or the great Himalayas what we have? How do you visualize Bharat Mata? I always say, people of India represent Bharat Mata. People of India represent Bharat Mata. So if you grow to such a level that the Jai Jai cars which you get as an individual are collectively going to become Jai Jai cars to Bharat Mata. So every one of us has to strive to get Jai Jai cars so that Bharat Mata will get the 
overall JJ cars. This is what I conceive and I perceive as Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Here, in our August presence, we have such dear child of Bharat Mata, Sri Dure Swami. So the Jai Jai cars, what he is getting, are ultimately going to Bharat Mata. We need such sons and daughters for this nation. So. I am extremely thankful you, to you, sir, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to meet so many youngsters and also their uh, parents here. India is celebrating the 75 years of independence. Ajadika Amrit Mahotsav we are all celebrating. And this institution is celebrating its golden jubilee, the 50 years completion. <laughs> we are all sitting in a wonderful place this I call it as a gymnasium. So this 50 years transformation of this institute has been from Vyayam Shala to this gymnasium because Dr. Dorai Swamiji has started the entire PES in a small gymnasium. It's called Vyayam Shala. It is not a big gym, what you are thinking now. It's a one-room gymnasium. Morning they used to organize the school and by keeping all the instruments aside and after the school all those instruments they used to be kept again to be used as Vyayam Shala. See the transformation because it is the determination from bodybuilding now he is doing nation building. So this is what we need to appreciate. From bodybuilding in a small gymnasium Vyayam Shala now he is doing nation building in the form of education. So hats off to you, sir, for this wonderful journey. Morning I met him at his place. I met him and uh, Professor uh, Jawaharji also. We had a wonderful discussion. And while walking with him into these premises and also to the other auditorium and also to this auditorium, I felt as if I am walking with Moksha Gundam Vishweshwarayaji. That is the feeling I got. Because I am an engineer. Because whenever I come to Bangalore, I visit Vishweshwaraya's museum. So I request all the youngsters to visit Vishweshwaraya's museum. There is one place which is very, very interesting to me. They see what Vishweshwaraya's dairy curriculum when he was 22 year old and what was Vishweshwaraya's daily routine at the age of 98. So there is a comparison that is placed, I don't know how many of you have observed it, but it is almost the same. At the age of 22, he used to read the newspapers in the morning. At the age of 98, he used to read the newspapers in the evening. Other than that, his daily curriculum or the daily routine is the same. So the children have to understand this. Irrespective of our age, our activity should be the same. So while walking with him, I had that feeling. At the age of 87, I mean, his thoughts, the way he wants to build this institution to the world's um, best institution, he is full of ideas. So, in fact, you are all very fortunate to get inducted to this prestigious institution called the PES University. It is People's Education Society, but I say it is a prestigious education society. That is what I always feel. So, congratulations to all of you and also on the dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Surya Prasad, the uh, Vice Chancellor, Dr. K. S. Sridhar, the Registrar, Professor Ajay Kumar, the CBO, Dr. Sailashri, the Dean of Management Studies, and all the, the people. My connection with Karnataka, also I want to tell you. My mother is from Ballari. So I used to be, during my summer vacation, most of the time I used to be in Ballari. I used to be very, very inquisitive child. I used to ask so many tough questions to my grandfather. So somehow he tried to, wanted to escape from my questions. So what he did is he gave me a small notebook 
and asked me to sit on the parapet wall and he instructed me to note down all the vehicles numbers which are passing by so morning i 8 o'clock i used to start and i used to be there till 8 o'clock uh, till 6 o'clock in the evening so most of my time has gone in uh, balari we used to stay opposite to moti theater in uh, balari that is where i my child so i have lot of connection with uh, uh, karnataka and also while serving in the organization central bureau of investigation this karnataka state also used to be in my jurisdiction i used to come very very frequently so these are the physical uh, this thing and also of course about bangalore there are many things to note and one of them is the pes university that is also a very important thing if you talk about bangalore's history definitely pes finds the place so all the children and the parents who are attending this i always welcome you of course this induction program i am reminded of my son's uh, similar induction program we had my son was a student of uh, bits pilani rajasthan where we attended like this after the induction program my son and came and told me one thing i want to be the student union president because during the induction program you will be exposed to the various things in the university or the institution so i request all the children to be extremely careful and cautious and also concentrate so that this is the only occasion where you have you will know about the institution in a nutshell and then it gives you an opportunity to decide what you want to be and where you want to be so after that program he came and told me that i want to be the student union president in the third year he became the student union president so why i am telling you is this the decision what you take today is going to lead you these three years or four years which you are going to spend here is definitely going to make you a citizen of this nation so it's a transformation that is going to take place so all the children who are here kindly make a note and by evening you should be able to decide what you want to be after three years or what is your goal so that is why this induction program is being organized i was talking about the body building to nation building what uh, dr dorai swami garu is doing because great people always invest their sweat and blood in education if you take k m munshi he has started this bharatiya vidya bhavan schools if you take arabindo he has started the arabindo schools rabindranath tagore he started the shanti niketan then mahatma hansraj he started the dav schools like this sri dr dore swami started this pes institution starting from a school mahanu vyaktigalu tamma bivaru mattu raktavannu shikshanadalli koodagi suttari that is what i say because their sweat and blood always great people invest in education because education is the thing for nation building annadana mahadana adari nimage dinakki eradu bari aahara beku ಶಿಕ್ಷಣದ ಕೂಡಿಗೆ ಇನ್ನೂ ದೊಡ್ಡದಾಗಿದೆ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ನದಾನ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಗುಡ್ ದಾನ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ದಾನ ವಾಟ್ ಎನಿ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೂ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ದಾನ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದೊರೈಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗಾರು ಈಸ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನೌ ಟು ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಯಂಗ್ಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಡೆಮೋಗ್ರಫಿಕ್ ಡಿವಿಡೆಂಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದಿ ಲಾರ್ಜೆಸ್ಟ್ youth population every country in its lifetime gets this only opportunity only once india has such an opportunity and it started somewhere in 1980 and this is going to end in 2040 we have only 16 years and 4 months time for this demographic dividend to exist after 2040 the number of old people the population is going to turn old so this is the crucial time where each individual especially the youngsters they have to excel if you excel india is going to excel so never think that 
if I excel, what is going to happen? That's why I started with Bharat Mata Ki Jai. If everyone excels, India is going to excel. I worked with Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Just now Dr. Durai Swami sir was asking because Dr. Kalam visited this institution many times. During informal discussions, Dr. Kalam started telling us, nowadays I go to many institutions. Lot of youngsters are wearing t-shirts with New York written on it, with London written on it, and our youngsters are moving on the roads. But what Abdul Kalam dreamt of was that he used to tell us, I want such a developed India. By seeing this developed India, youth in New York, youth in England, they should wear t-shirts with Bharat India written on it. That should be India. That is how we need to make a developed India, developed nation. So it is our bound and responsibility now as youngsters who are in a typical critical phase of this demographic dividend, you all should make India a developed nation. So I request all of you to realize your potential. Realize your potential and do your best. Do your best. This three years time is going to be very, very crucial in your life. Very, very crucial in your life. And now you have come to a university. Earlier you were in a school, then you did your 11th and 12th, and now you are in a university. The purpose of education as it has mentioned is to understand the universe. So this university is going to expose you to what universe is. That's why it is called university. So these three years, the faculty here, and also the people around, and also the people who are sitting on the dais, all of them are going to make you realize what universe is. So I always ask you to become excellent. I mean, children, youngsters, they should know the difference between excellence and success. There is a difference between excellence and success. I give you a simple example. I have a very good friend in Mumbai because I worked in, I am from Maharashtra Kader, I worked, served 21 years in Maharashtra. There is a person called Sandeep Bache. You must be wondering, he must be a uh, CEO of a company or he must be someone else. But he is an auto driver. A good friend of mine, he is an auto driver. If you go to Mumbai, have a pleasure of having a ride in his auto rickshaw. The moment you sit in his auto rickshaw, you find all the dailies, your Times of India, your Maharashtra, all vernacular papers, all English papers, dailies will be there. He keeps two flasks. In one flask, you have hot coffee. In the other flask, you have hot tea. And you have a box which has all the toffees, chocolates for the children. And he has a Wi-Fi router in his auto. And he has a landline phone in his auto. While flying, you can use your phone or you can use your router. And then he charges only 50% to the senior citizens. And he doesn't charge anyone who is going to a hospital. This is called excellence. This is called excellence. So I also want you to be excellent. In whatever field you are going to go, as a student, you have to be excellent student. That is what is my endeavor. You may be feeling that now you got more freedom because you have been under the control of your parents all these years. Till 10th standard, 11th standard, every day mom was asking, show me your notes, show me the diary written by your uh, lecturer and all. Now you have entered into a university, now I have all freedom. That's what many people think. But I caution you, it is not freedom, but it is the responsibility which is being put on your shoulder. I tell you, when you are under observations, under not under observation, how you behave. In our police studies, they told us about this experiment. They have taken a envelope containing money and they have kept it on the street. Within two seconds, it disappeared. 
then they kept another envelope with money and they wrote they kept cctv cameras again it vanished in two minutes two seconds then another envelope they got and kept it but this time cctv cameras have been there and also they wrote you are under cctv surveillance and that envelope remained till evening so this is how a human being behavior changes when he is being observed but here nobody is going to observe you you are going to observe yourself because you are in a university so that's why i said don't think that you have more freedom but you have more responsibility and your parents are trusting you and that you are going to become an excellent student and excellent student of this institution feel that responsibility feel that responsibility then you can excel as i mentioned you visit two temples every day in this campus you need to visit two temples every day you may be wondering what are these temples here the first temple is the library the second temple is the playground so these are the two temples you have in this university you visit these temples every day i always wish to read some news item like this there is a stampede in the library of the university there is a stampede in the university library how good news it is that means the students are going in such a number to the library and they are there was a stampede dr dorai swami sir also wants to hear such news that there is a stampede in the university's library i always want to have fights in the university there should be lot of fights in the university professor jawhar must be speaking i think i should not have called lakshmi narayana as the chief guest today because this campus is very peaceful university institution but he is saying that we need to have fights the fight is not between you the fight is between you and the librarian the fight should be between you and the librarian that means you should keep demanding that i need this book and if the librarian doesn't get this book within one week pick up a fight with him then that news also should come in the newspaper the students of pes have picked up a fight with the librarian because he did not get a book how wonderful the news is going to be just imagine just imagine then you can travel towards excellence that is where excellence is going to come as i mentioned my grandfather used to give me a small notebook and used to ask me to sit on the parapet and write down the vehicle numbers because i used to ask three questions always why what how so my endeavor my request to all students is always keep asking these questions why what how then your inquisitiveness is going to increase don't take it on the face value of it always ask why what how these three questions will make you more creative will make you more inquisitive will make you more imaginative imagination is the only nation that is going to survive in this competitive world so be imaginative when you are imaginative your creativity will increase and you all are going to become innovators innovators all of you have cell phones and the most used application nowadays is swiggy and zomato these are the two apps which are being used you are using the application have you ever checked how this application has come into existence have you ever asked how because a student like you in a rainy season he was sitting in his house and he was thinking can i get hot pakoda then he started thinking why not someone get from a restaurant hot pakoda to my house he did not stop there he started taking the details of all the restaurants in the town and also all the people who are willing to use their vehicles to bring those pakoda to his house and he developed an application that became swiggy and you are using that application so if you are imaginative then 
you can also be the inventors of such applications. Sky is the limit to your imagination. So my request to all the students is that the academics are there, there is no doubt, but don't kill your creativity. Don't kill your imagination. Another application which most of the students use is the red bus application. A red bus application to book your bus tickets. How this red bus application has started, do you know? There were four students in Vignan Engineering College in Guntur in Andhra Pradesh. They received call letters for their interview from Bangalore. They all went to the bus stand, bus station, but by the time all the buses have gone and only one bus was standing and the bus conductor refused to entertain, men because, entertain them because they did not have the bus tickets. Then they came back to their rooms and started thinking, like a train reservation system, if you can have bus reservation system also, how good it would be. We would have caught the bus and would have gone for the interview. They sat for six months and they developed this application called Red Bus. After running it for two years, they sold this application, got 1,600 crores of rupees. These four people each has 400 crores. This is the level of your imagination. This is what creativity is. We all have such brains. Another story I'll tell you. Albert Einstein is the biggest scientist. I mean, he's the great scientist. After his death, many countries demanded his brain for study. Then Einstein's brain was made into small pieces and it was given to 52 countries to find out how this brain is different from the other brains. All the 52 countries, they came to a conclusion that Albert Einstein's brain and your brain is the same. There is no difference. But the way you are using the brain is going to make you what you are going to be. So my dear students, never say that had we had I, Albert Einstein brain, we would have invented so many things. No, Albert Einstein's brain and your brain is the same. How best you use it? I tell you how you, we use our brain. There is a study conducted again. 40% of our brain, we keep thinking about the things that have gone past. 40% of the brain we use for thinking about future. 8% of the brain we use for unnecessary things. Unnecessary things also we are using our brain. Whether KGF3 is going to be a big success or not, that is none of your botheration. But we are using our brain for that. So 8% we are using for such unnecessary things. 8% of the brain you are using to demotivate yourself. So like this, 96% of the brain we are using. So what you are using is only 4%. But Albert Einstein used all his 100% of the brain for this and he became the greatest scientist. So if you people also use your brain 100%, you all will become excellent persons and the whole world will be giving JJ cars to you and these JJ cars are going to Bharat Mata Ki Jai. So I request all the students to use their brain 100%. So maybe I think it's the time I should uh, stop. I think only 17 minutes. I'll tell you four things you need to train and I'll close. The first one is training your body is very important. As I mentioned, Dr. Dore Swami started with training the mind in a gymnasium, in a Vyayam Shala. So you also devote time to train your body. The second one is train your mind. Training the mind is also very important. How do you train your mind? If you control your breathing process, your mind will be under control. So my simple advice to all of you is that practice dhyana, yoga, pranayama, whatever suits you so that it keeps your mind under your control and it gets trained. The third training what you need to get is training your word. The way you speak is also very, very important. That's why people say the dress and address is very important. Dress is the way you dress 
address is not your home address the way you speak these are very very important so how to train your word is read books other than your textbooks they are going to give you more vocabulary more ideas to speak and the fourth one is train your thought process always think positive always think positive whenever a student commits suicide i feel very sorry for him when i read the newspapers of youngsters committing suicide i feel very bad the main reason is that they are not training the the thought process always develop a positive thought process the only only way you can train your thought process is your reading biographies and autobiographies of great people once you read their autobiographies the sufferings which they had undergone and the your plight there is no comparison at all then you develop a positive mindset read the story of dr dorai swami how in 50 years time from a small vyayam shala he has come to this big a campus that itself gives you a positive mindset so these four trainings are very important training your train your body train your mind train your word and train your thought process these three years are going to be very very crucial for you to have all these trainings so i congratulate all of you for joining the prestigious institution called the pes and also utilize these three years and you should not feel proud that you are a student of pes but your institute should feel that so and so is my students that is what the compliment or the written gift what you can give to the institution give a written gift to your institution dr dorai swami will be waiting at the entrance of the gate to receive you if you get a great name to this institution don't be a stereotyped person establish your own identity each one has the capability to have your identity established so my humble advice or advice to all of you is every one of you have a great potential realize that potential and become the great person finally i tell you three goals as one second i'll take dr kalam ji used to tell us because he gave me an assignment whenever you find time go to schools and colleges and meet the future of the nation that is how even though he was a president of india he used to go to schools and colleges to address children finally he breathed his last while addressing students in iim shillong that is dr kalam that is dr kalam so he told us three goals he told us whenever i go to institutions children keep asking me sir what should be our goals so then he formulated three goals the first goal is your parents should pat your back and say sebhash they give because of you our prestige in the society has gone up that is what your parents should say because of you our name and our prestige in the society has gone up this should be the first goal the second goal a student should dream of is today you write in your notebook one day i'll come as a chief guest to pes and i'll occupy that chair that should be your second goal in your life become a chief guest in your alma mater become a chief guest your alma mater what a wonderful feeling it will be you are going as a chief guest to your own institution wonderful the third thing what dr kalam told all of you as is and you also your signature should become autograph your signature should become autograph these are the three goals each student should have you have the right environment you have right people to guide you and people who are selfless and they want your development so use these three years to the best possible extent and make yourself excellent citizens of this nation thank you very much jai hind bharat mata ki jai ego horatevu bidugadegagi namagaru baharidiragi jaikar mukantra tamma maatanna prarambhisi jaikar dindane tamma maatanna mugusidantaha ನಮ್ಮ ಇಂದಿನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಅತಿಥಿಗಳು
ಉತ್ತಮ ಅನುಭವದ ಮಾತುಗಳು ನಮ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹದ ನುಡಿಗಳನ್ನು ಆಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ವಿ ವಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಸಿ ಬಿ ಐ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಜಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿಟೈರ್ಡ್ ಅಡಿಷನಲ್ ಜಿ ಡಿ ಪಿ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಇವರಿಗೆ ನಾನು ಪಿ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಯ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾದವನ್ನು ತಿಳಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ನಾವು ಎಳೆಯರು ನಾವು ಗೆಳೆಯರು ಹೃದಯ ಹೂವಿನ ಹಂದರ ನಾಳೆ ನಾವೇ ನಾಡ ಹಿರಿಯರು ನಮ್ಮ ಕನಸದು ಸುಂದರ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಕನಸುಗಳನ್ನು ಹೊತ್ತು ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಮತ್ತು ಪೋಷಕರು ನಮ್ಮ ಪಿ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗೆ ಸೇರ್ಪಡೆ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಮಕ್ಕಳನ್ನು ಕಾಲೇಜಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿಸುವಾಗ ಒಂದು ವಿಷಯ ಪೋಷಕರ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ನನ್ನ ಮಗು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಕಂಪ್ನಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿರುವಂಥ ಕಾಲೇಜನ್ನೇ ನಾವು ಹುಡುಕಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅ ರೈಟ್ ಡಿಸಿಷನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಪಿ ಇ ಎಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಡೆಯುತ್ತೆ ದಟ್ ಟು ಬೈ ದ ಪ್ರಾಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ನೀಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ಗೆ ಬೇಕಾಗಿರುವಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ತರೆಯಾರಿಯನ್ನು ಪಿ ಇ ಎಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳು ಇನ್ನು ಮೂರು ವರ್ಷಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಲಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅದರ ಜೊತೆ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಮೌಲ್ಯಾಧಾರಿತ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ದಿನ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಮಕ್ಕಳಾಗಿದ್ರಿ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕೈ ಹಿಡಿದು ನಡೆಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಇನ್ನು ರೆಕ್ಕೆ ಬಲೆತ ಹಕ್ಕಿಗಳು ಇನ್ನು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನವನ್ನು ನೀವೇ ಸರಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ನೀವೇ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಗುರಿಯನ್ನು ಹುಡುಕ್ತಾ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳುವಂಥ ದಿನಗಳು ಪ್ರಾರಂಭವಾಗಿದೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನೀವು ಈ ಥರ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆದಾಗ ಅಂತ ಅನಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ನನ್ನ ಮಗ ಮಂಗಳು ಬೆಳೆದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇನ್ನು ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಅವರ ಜೀವನ ಅವರ ದಾರಿಯನ್ನು ಅವರೇ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತಾರೆ ಮುಂದೆ ಗುರಿ ಹಿಂದೆ ಗುರು ಇದ್ದರೆ ಗೆಲುವು ಮಿಂಚಿನ ಓಟ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಈ ರೀತಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟಲ್ಲಿ ಪಿ ಇ ಎಸ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಗಿರುವಂಥ ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳಿಬ್ಬರನ್ನ ನಾನು ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಬರ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಮೊದಲನೇದಾಗಿ ವರ್ಷ ಪಿ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಫೈನಲ್ ಇಯರ್ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಡೆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಏಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಪರ್ ಆನಮ್ ವರ್ಷ ಪಿ ಆನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಟು ಶೇರ್ ಹರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಐಮ್ ವರ್ಷ ಅ ಪ್ರೌಡ್ ಆಲಮ್ ಇನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಎಂ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಮೈ ಬ್ಯಾಚಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ today i stand in front of all of you with immense joy and a tinge of nostalgia i truly believe it's an honor to share my personal experience and express my heartfelt gratitude to pes university and the department of bba their dedication to excellence has given me every step and has helped me face all the challenges academically and professionally the workshops they conducted the hackathons and the business stimulation events have enriched my knowledge and skills making sure i'm prepared for the real world and to face the real challenges but to all the youngsters who are here to start their journey at pes i would just like to say that coming to pes is not just going to be about academics so pes as a university is lot more than just academics so here embrace the holistic development I urge all of you to take all the opportunities that come on your way and make sure you as yourself develop to a better individual because we are going to be the future. So how we develop individually matters a lot. So after this, I would like to say that I proudly stand here as a testament to the exceptional knowledge and skills PAS University has provided me with. With the guidance of the faculty, I I made my way to my dream job at Dell Technologies. I encourage each one of you to take active part in all the extracurricular activities, both the classroom activities as well as all the other activities inside the university. And last but not the least, I would tell all of you to carry all the lessons learned and the values instilled and the friendships forged with you. let the spirit of pes university guide you to achieve remarkable things and making a positive impact to the world thank you pes university for the memories the education and the lifelong lessons and to you my dear juniors i wish you a fulfilling and a transformative journey ahead thank you we are very proud of you varsha next i call upon anvita shetty she is
fills my heart with immense pleasure and gratitude to stand before you all today as a proud alumnus of this prestigious college and department of BCom. As we gather here today to welcome the first year students, I find myself re reflecting on my own journey and the role this college and department has played in shaping my future. First and foremost, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the college management and the faculty of BCom department. It is because of their unwavering dedication to nurturing talent and providing a world-class education that I stand before you today as a proud alumnus and a working professional. During my time here, I was not only equipped with knowledge and skills in the field of commerce, but also instilled with values that have guided me throughout. The emphasis on integrity, hard work, and critical thinking has been instrumental in helping me navigate the challenges of the professional world. I must take a moment to express my profound gratitude to the placement cell. Their tireless efforts in organizing job fairs, conducting mock interviews, and providing a valuable insights into the job market were invaluable. It was through their support that I secured my dream job at Siemens Healthineers which served as a launching pad for my career. To the first year students, I want to say that you are about to embark on a transformative journey. College life will undoubtedly present you with numerous opportunities and challenges. Lastly, I want to express my heartfelt congratulations to the first year students for securing a place in this esteemed institution. Thanks once again to the college and department for providing me with exceptional foundation for my career. I'm proud to be an alumnus of this esteemed institution, and I'm certain that the same pride will accompany each one of, each one of you when you graduate in the years to come. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, Anvita Shetty. We are truly proud of every single student who are placed in PS University, and we wish them all a bright future. PS University has been awarding students with the Professor MRD Merit Scholarship for the students with exceptional academic performance. May I now request Dr. MR Doreswami, sir, Honorable Chancellor, to present the MRD Merit Scholarship Awards. I request students to please come forward and collect the scholarship. Maunesh BBA MRD scholarship for the CGPA of 8.98. <laughs> Meghana N BBA Hotel and Event Management MRD scholarship for the CGPA of 9.09. Skandan Bharatraj, BBA, Sports Management, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 8.79. Teneti Sahiti, BBA Performing Arts, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.03. Anusha BM, BCom, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 8.96. Siri Mahalakshmi S, ACCA, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 9. Prachi Ayappa, BSc Psychology, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.38. Nirmita PR, Bachelor of Design, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.39. Sandeshri DB, BBA LLB, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 9.17. Sai Duty KV, BBA LLB, MRD Scholarship for the CGPA of 8.92. Thank you, sir. Congratulations for all the students who have got scholarship.
Dr. M. R. Dore Swami, Honorable Chancellor PS University and Founder PS Group of Institutions. Dr. Dore Swami, affectionately known as M. R. D., is an educationalist par excellence who has built and nurtured the PS Group of Institutions for over three decades. Today, PS Group of Institutions are offering higher education across the spectrum of engineering, management, law, commerce, design, pharmacy, and medical sciences. Under his dynamic leadership, today, PS Group of Institutions are offering quality education to more than 25,000 students supported by an able and competent staff of more than 1,500 teaching professionals. Dr. MRD was a Fulbright Fellow to both USA and UK, which gave him immense exposure to the emerging global trends in education and thereby helped him to formulate and shape the growth and policies of PES institutions. Professor MRD was a former member of Legislative Council between 2011 and 2016, representing the Karnataka government in the education sector. He has also served as an advisor in the BS Edurapa government, holding a cabinet rank position. He is one of the main architects of implementing the new education policy, NEP, in Karnataka state and has submitted 17 recommendations to the state government, many of them which are seeing the benefits in the education sector. Dr. MRD's motto is to deliver high quality education services in the best interest of the students and society. We are very fortunate to have you, sir. I now request our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. M.R. Dore Swami, sir, for his presidential address. Good morning to everybody. Our esteemed chief guest of today, Sri V. V. Lakshmi Narayan, the Pro Chancellor of the PS University, Dr. Jawahar. The Chancellor of the University, Suri Prasad, CEO of our Ajay Kumar, our Dean, or the Registrar of the University, Dr. Sridhar, and our Student Dean, Shaili Sri. Madam, respected teachers, parents, and students. Perhaps today is one of the greatest today in the history of PES. The simple reason our chief guest mentioned the India is celebrating 75th anniversary. PES is celebrating the golden jubilee of the PES University. I am, as a founder of the institution, perhaps it gives me great happiness, pleasure, inspiration, hap all associated with the good things, to see the growth of the institution and to see 
the large number of students, more than students, the enthusiastic parents that I am seeing you before me gives me greatest satisfaction. Perhaps as an educationalist, I feel that the participation of the parents, participation of the teachers, and participation of the students will have a more meaningful learning. From that point of view, I feel it is an immense pleasure to see the large number of parents and they flooded with the PES campus. Friends, there is one more reason for me to be very happy about our chief guest, as you just heard, very inspiring speech. His uh, name indicates V. V. Rachmina Ryan. V stands for victory. Here is a person, not only one V, he has a two Vs. Two V. V. Rachmina Ryan. So, victory, not only one victory. He has seen number of victories in his lifetime. It's a great thing. And whatever he spoke, it is not just a oratory. It is not just a, just to please you or any such thing. It is from the heart. Why I say this? He wanted whatever feelings that he has, he expressed with us, shared with us, and inspired all of us. It is a great thing. And always PES will be very careful in selecting the, the chief guest because chief guest should be the role model to the younger generation. Not only younger generation, to all of us. So the, it is not mere the designation that he carries but the contribution that he makes to the country and the values that he is wedded to and values that he cherish and is propagating. And I learned that he is a member of the lead India headed by late Abdul Kalam. What else you require that itself is a exemplary example to show his commitment to the nation, commitment to the society. Perhaps he was mentioning that his connection with the Karnataka, special relationship with Karnataka. Perhaps he has not mentioned one important thing. I don't mention the name, but the contribution that he has made to the Karna uh, Karnataka, not only Karnataka, through Karnataka to India. There is a person made lot of illegal wealth and used to get on and make a big name and fame with his illegal, ill-gotten wealth. And as a, as, a, as a officer in the department, he took a bold decision to see that a, such a thing should be such a person, whoever may be, however well-placed he is, should be, should be taught a lesson and he did it. Let us congratulate him for the, one of the greatest deeds that he did in the society. He has set an example, a bureaucrat, whichever department he belong, he may belong, but if he has a will, if he has a mind, and if he has interest, country interest in the heart, that he can achieve things and show the way how India we can build. We had to be proud of such people. We have to be proud of people like Vivi Lakshmi Narayan because he has set an example himself to a simple living and high thinking. Maybe one of the principles that he adopts in his life and he has succeeded. And we need people of this order and people of this character and people of this patriotism who can provide leadership to the country. I am very happy that all along we used to have a combined fu inaugural function 
that means combined means engineering and non engineering now i am very happy to the golden jubilee year jawhar has took a right decision to because it is a, it has become so unwieldy that is a happy thing it has become unwieldy means the growth of the institution the number of students the number of parents who are attending this function who wanted to be a part of this function so it is it is not possible to have only one function for both engineering and non engineering so he decided to have the divide two engineering one one inaugural function and non engineering and uh, the another another inaugural function so this is the first time that this experiment is happening and i am very happy to see the first experiment is very successful experiment let us congratulate our jawhar for the right decision not only jawhar his team his team the team is very very important they all along vivi lakshmi narayan was telling the response it is not the response it is the team and it is the team spirit it is the team means object in the same goal object in the same ideology object in the same having the same desire and ambition to build the country that should be the education is nothing but building the nation i always believe in it and he the our chief guest mentioned the ps i am proud and also he mentioned started in a gym but we have, i have not forgotten the gym the gym that i have started in a small scale there where you can see a very big scale gym in the university here so the every student can see after the your lunch you can just see, see visit the, the campus, campus. One, one of the, the interesting things is a big gym, gym. one, one of, of the excellent facilities, facilities that, that you have, have. so, so the, the that is the again the chief guest mentioned the, the first and the foremost, foremost thing that we should give attention is to our physique you should have you see, see he, he mentioned the three, three things to be very very important the first thing is the physics that you should give and the last thing that your last and the foremost important thing is the the brain that you use and how much percentage you are using now and how much percentage you have capable to you are capable to have so friends one of the objectives of the pes is to see that there we should provide proper atmosphere in the institution not only just teaching and preparing you for the examination that is a that is a everybody does every university does but beyond it we wanted to go what is that beyond it that we wanted to go we wanted to see who you are getting to the pes by the when he enters pes and when he stay in the pes when he goes out the time that he goes out there should be a a tremendous change in him change change in his outlook change change towards the society towards the country and he should be in the position to take the responsibility in the society yes in the process it happens the placements is a very important which we cannot ignore every parent every student is interested in the placement i am happy to say our placement officer the our registrar he started as a planner not only professor in mechanical teaching subject but he was a placement officer now nearly 600 companies are visiting the pes university for placement we have made a record so far the placements are concerned and i was feeling all alone i was also jealous only engineering college students they are getting because of the you know the it revolution that, that has taken place in india we are fortunate to have the it revolution the one of the uh, very successful uh, country that we have the growth that we have is because of the it revolution i can say and uh, naturally our it the engineering, engineering students, students they are getting, getting uh, very attractive 
uh, package, which I'm, I was happy, not that un unhappy. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to share on this very happy occasion. One of the students before last year, his, uh, his package was one crore. That was the package that he has received. A student of engineering, B, B computer science student. We are happy. But all along I was thinking that non-engineering students are deprived such a good package, attractive package, and we should see that the non-engineering students too should, uh, lag, should not lag behind in their package and all that. So the best thing is after emerging as a university, 2013, PES emerged as a university. From that onwards, we went on thinking how to change the structure so far the syllabus is concerned. The content of the syllabus is very, very important and we saw to it that a lot of changes and whatever we speak, the industry and academia should uh, work together. It is happening in PES. So we have involved the industry to the great extent. What extent we can change, we can bring revolutionary changes in our syllabus and in our structure. And perhaps some of these things made non-engineering students too. I am very happy a BCom student has secured 20 lakhs package last year from PES University. So this is the way the history, the story of PES goes on. And year to year, there is improvement, not only package, there is improvement in the all round. But our object is, we are wedded to two, two things. What is those three, our, our vision, we have, perhaps you are aware, that the quality of education, no compromise. Quality is the first and the foremost thing. And secondly, values. Values and quality of education should go together. So without values, a good package may not help. And without, you see, the values are more important and it is the values which uh, added to your, your uh, the stature of the uh, personality. Our uh, chief guest was mentioning, very interesting, very, very interestingly, the dress and the address, both should, should go together. So you have to, it is not only you should well dress, but also your address also that you make should be very, uh, very effective and you should be very useful. So the every student who comes out from the PES should add to the society, make a name, fame, and see that our country, now I am I'm always telling my students that India, the greatest thing that I, we can speak about our country is our culture. Culture, Indian culture, is one of the uh, very, very important that every student should always remember. Indian culture, Indian way of life, and Indian history, every one of us should be proud and see that not only that you come up the three years or four years or five years courses that you have non-engineering, everybody should concentrate well on your studies, not only studies, beyond studies, and whatever activities that we have, we have a lot of extracurricular activities that all of you should actively participate in these extracurricular activities. And these extracurricular activities add to the, the dimension of your personality development. And everybody should not, everybody should see that they should participate in all these activities and make a name, fame to you, to your parents, and to the university that you studied, and then lastly, the country that you have born. I always, my, I always believe three M's you should always remember. Three M's, very easy to remember, but very, very important to remember. What is that three M? M, first M stands mother. You must give all importance because she is the personification of God. Mother, 
is the personification of the God. The first M you should give the importance. What is the second M? The second M is mother tongue. Yes, nothing wrong. You know, now we had a Narasimha Rao, the former Prime Minister of our country, who was well versed with the 14 languages. Yes, nothing wrong in learning more and more languages. But your mother tongue, you should not forget and you must give importance. No one should feel speaking in your mother tongue is below your dignity. Whether you are in the USA, whether you are in the, any other country, any part of the globe, you should give importance to the mother tongue. So first, mother, first M stands mother, second M stands mother tongue, and third M stands very, very important motherland. So I wanted that every student who has enrolled in PS University, lifelong, you should remember these three M's. And one more thing, three L's. Lifelong learning, three L. Lifelong learning. So three M, three L. These are these mantras that every student who get into the PS University should always remember. And I wish all the best. And I congratulate especially the students who have secured 10 out of 10. That should be your goal. Those who have joined now this year, you should have the, your goal that you should also next year, you should be invited on, on the platform. Chief guest should give you the, he should honor you having secured 10 out of 10. That should be your goal. So they have, ex uh, they make yourself, you are very good in studies, make yourself, you are very good in your activities and ultimately you should emerge as a great, you see the Indian who can contribute something to the society and to the family and bring a name, fame to you, to your family and to the country. Thank you very much. Antara Tamani Guru Atma Tamohari Jatila Kutila Tamantharanga Bahu Bhava Vipina Sanchari Nama PSM Seya Sansapaka Dyakshuru Pradhyapakaragi, Adhyapakaragi, Pranshupalaragi, Samsia, Sansthapakaragi, P. A. Samsian of the Navan, the Kanasana Bitti Vatu, Adanavan, the Subadra Kote and Nagi near Missidare, when the Samste Kato, the Samania, the Matala, Ivatu Vasha, the Suvarana Sampramavana, Navu Achar Stai Deve. Sir, I thank you on behalf of P. A. S. University, P. A. S. Institution for the Presidential Address. Ivatu Puraskata Radanta Yella with the article of Vedike Melevando, photo session Geber Bekunta Prathane Congratulations again, once again, and thank you, everyone. Feeling gratitude and not presenting is like wrapping a gift and not presenting it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome 
K.S. Dr. K.S. Sridhar, Registrar P.S. University, a pillar of support at P.S. University. He has served as a placement officer. He has contributed immensely for the growth of the university and grown along with the university. Let me take this privilege of calling upon the Registrar P.S. University, Dr. K.S. Sridhar for vote of thanks. A very warm and grateful morning to everyone present here. I deem it my proud privilege to present the vote of thanks on a very important and auspicious occasion like this. I owe my sincere gratitude and thank our chief guest of the day, Sri V. V. Lakshmi Narayan, a distinguished officer of the police department who was kind enough to accept our invitation to be present amidst us today and to address all the young minds, the new entrants, to the portals of P.S. University. Sir, your speech was really inspiring, very motivational. I'm very confident that all our students who are present here will apply it to themselves and become useful citizens and proud citizens of our country. I request our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. M. R. Doreswamy, to present a token of our gratitude to Sri V. V. Lakshmi Narayan. Our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. M. R. Doreswamy, is the backbone and a pillar of support to all the activities in the university. We feel ourselves fortunate to be working under his guidance. We look up to him as a father figure and we regard him for all the valuable information he gives to all of us. He is perhaps called the youngest person on the campuses of PES. He is a doyen of education and his involvement in ensuring that students in the university get all that is needed is highly commendable. I, on my personal behalf and on behalf of everyone present here, extend my sincere thanks to our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. M. R. Doreswamy, for his kind presence and inspiring all the young minds present in the audience today. Yet another very energetic person on the campus of PS is our Honorable Pro-Chancellor, Professor D. Jawahar. Professor Jawahar is one person who provides the direction and motivation to all of us to achieve. It is really interesting to know from him and learn from him, and he gives us new ways to do things better on campus. Sir, thank you very much for your kind presence today. In fact, soon after this vote of thanks, you will be listening to him. He is an orator par excellence, and you will see for yourself in the next couple of minutes. A big thanks to our respected Vice Chancellor, Dr. J. Surya Prasad, for all his support, guidance, and encouragement for all the activities on the campus. It is wonderful working with him and also interacting with him. Sir, thank you very much for your presence. We truly appreciate your support to all of us. One person who works tirelessly to give the best to all faculty and students is none other than our Chief Operating Officer, Professor Ajoy Kumar. His involvement in working towards perfection is something to be proud about. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence this morning. We truly appreciate being amidst us today. Dr. Shailashri Haridas, she is the Dean of the Faculty of Management and Commerce. She is also the advisor to the program of Law and Psychology. She works tirelessly to ensure that things are in the right place, and it's her involvement which makes this function a huge success today. Madam, thank you very much for your presence and for all the help and support that you've been giving. I would like to thank the mammoth gathering of parents and grandparents who have assembled here in large numbers to witness their wards joining our university. A huge round of applause to all the parents and grandparents 
and the accompanists of our dear students. Of course, our students are our pride. I take this opportunity to affectionately and warmly welcome all the young minds to the portals of PS University. A very, very happy, educative, and pleasant stay to all of you. Over the next couple of years, you're going to be here with us. Thank you, students, very much. And you are truly fortunate to have listened to two great people on this occasion. One is our own chief guest, and one is our honorable Pro Chancellor, Professor M. R. Doreswamy. I think you have a lot of message to carry from what they all told you. I would truly appreciate you to re have them as your role models and follow all the information and the advice they gave you today. I thank Professor Jaya from BBA, Professor Geeta from the PU department, Professor Nivedita, BBA, Faculty of Management Commerce, for their excellent comparing this morning. A huge round of applause to them. I also thank Professor Anusha from the Performing Arts Department for having rendered that very soulful prayer in the very beginning of this program. I also thank our support staff and assisting staff for making all the necessary arrangements for making this function a grand success this morning. I thank the chairpersons of various departments of PES University, the deans of various programs of study, faculty colleagues for their presence this morning. I once again thank all the parents and grandparents and the others who have accompanied our dear students for this morning's function, not just present in this audience, but also who have assembled in the Dr. MRD Silver Jubilee Building in the auditorium there. It's once again my pleasure and privilege to thank one and all for making this function this morning a grand success. We will now have the national anthem, and soon after that, I request all of you to please stay back for the wonderful orientation. You will have a lot of valuable insights that would be given by our Honorable Pro-Chancellor, Professor Jawahar, and stay back and listen to what Professor Jawahar has to say, which is truly valuable for your stay over the next couple of years on our campus. We now stand up for the national anthem. Janayak jayahe bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab sindhu gujarat marata dravida utkala banga request you to please take your chairs. Your ladies and gentlemen, parents and students, please stay back. We will now have an orientation session by Professor Dr. Jawahar Sir, Pro-Chancellor, PS University. Request all the parents and students to stay back in the venue.
Professor Jawahar Dore Swami completed his MS in Mechanical Engineering from Texas A&M University and prior to that he has done his BE in Mechanical Engineering from Bangalore University. Since his return to India in 1991 and joining PES University, he has defined academic excellence, civil en civic engagement, diversity and financial security as top priorities for his administration. He is well known as an advocate for total quality education, initiatives and spirit framework for continued growth and is a proponent of technology in teaching, learning, assessment and governance. For more than three decades, he has ensured the development of PS institutions, overseen a significant rise in student diversity, expanded PS activities in teaching, learning and spearheaded the PS group through strategic planning exercises designed to improve its academic and financial model within the context of changing trends in higher education. Professor Jawahar and his dedicated team at PS has demonstrated the core virtues of PS, perseverance, excellence and service in all their endeavors. It is our pleasure to extend a warm welcome to Professor Jawahar who is currently serving as Pro-Chancellor of PS University and CEO of PS Group of Institution. We welcome you to address the academic batch of 2023 and 24, sir. Uh, morning. Give us a minute. Uh, Professor Javar is just seeing of the, the dignitaries and he should be here in a couple of minutes. Thank you. For students' information, please note we have bootstrap activity planned for the students for the coming week and the information about the bootstrap activity will come to your mail, your batch, group and the various activity that is scheduled to you will be there in your mail. Please have a look at the schedule and the venue for your bootstrap activity. Good afternoon. At the outset, it's my pleasure to address you all today. I was extremely happy for the first time in the history of PES, the morning function, which is scheduled to start at 10.30, started at 10.20 itself today. And the orientation program, which is supposed to start at 12, I'm a bit delayed, so starting at 12.05. For those of you who would like to take a break, uh, this is a good time to do so because uh, let me tell you this, this is going to be a two hour session. And by the way, it's not mandatory for you to participate in this. Only the students have to suffer, the, faculty, the parents don't have to. So I'm sure that uh, 
there's a lot of excitement that all of you have to participate in a process like this. Why is it that I need you to get used to a two-hour session? Because when classes start for you on a regular basis, every unit is going to be approximately two hours, 15 minutes. 45-minute periods, three periods together, and then you get the break. So if you can sit through this lecture, then you will last the three years that you're going to be studying in the campus. Otherwise, you're going to be having a hard time coping up whatever are the expectations that we will have. The People's Education Society was established in the year 1972. Our primary objective is to ensure that we empower our students to navigate the real world. Some of you who are here today in this campus, we also have these other campuses that are there, the Ring Road campus that we are in, the Electronic City campus. Some of the students from the EC campus are also here today. The Hanuman Nagar campus, that's where the entire journey started. Way back in 1976 is when we moved to the Hanuman Nagar campus. And the medical college in Kupam that we started in the year 2002. These are the four campuses that we have. The core values of PES, for, it's easy for you to remember, is perseverance, excellence, and service. Now, let me please explain, very important for all the students and also the parents to understand what I'm trying to say. We have a quiz which is going to be conducted at the end of your six weeks of classes. Questions that are there in the slides are a part of the questions that are going to be asked in the first quiz also. So you need to be paying a lot of attention to this. We're also going to be sharing these slides later for you so that you are aware of what is being asked here. So what are the core values of PES? This is, I'm leaking out a question in the question paper. The core values of PES are perseverance, excellence, and service. Very easy for you to remember. PES, perseverance, excellence, and service. Now, some of you are very good. You're already taking down notes, opened up your mobile phone, putting up your smartphone. Very happy. Good things to do. Good habits are always nice to follow. Now, what is perseverance to us? Uh, studying for two hours a day, good. Studying for two hours a day, all days of the week, very good. Studying two hours a day for all days in the month, very, very good. Studying two hours for the whole semester is discipline. Studying two hours a day for the rest of your life is perseverance. So you need to make sure that in the sense that, like the example that was given by our chief guest this morning, when he said that the habits of Vishweshwaraya were the same when he was 20, 22 years old and 90 years old, one of the commonality of what happened there was he probably studied for two hours a day on something or the other. He was always learning. So perseverance for us is a very, very important virtue. Second virtue that is very important to us in terms of values is excellence. We don't believe that everybody is talented in the same way in any institution. Each student will have a set of abilities that are there. First, you should be understanding what is your ability. The same teacher is going to be teaching a class of 60 students. How is it that students get a first rank and somebody gets the last rank? So when we look at it, we tell our children the same thing. Please know what your level is. At the end of each test, you will get your grades. In that grades, it will tell you how much marks you have scored. It will tell you what is the average of the class. It will tell you what is the highest of the class. So by that, you know that where do you stand in the class. Why is this important? I tell our children, don't worry about who has got the highest in the college. That is not what you should be worried about. It. First reference point for you, are you average, above average, or below average. If you are below average, you should work towards getting to the average first. If you are average, how do you become above the average? If you are above the average, you should target how do I become the best in that subject in the class. That for us is continuous improvement, and that for us is excellence. Every single student should not be afraid of where you start the journey. What you should be afraid of is, am I improving every single day that I'm going to be spending in this university? You have a three-year plan. Within three years, can we make you something exceptional, what you thought was not possible for you to become? And that's what we're going to be working towards. 
And the third component that is there, this is something that has been egging my mind. As soon as the new government came into power, they came up with this lot of wonderful schemes that are going to be there. So there is this uh, Anna Bhagya, so many Bhagyas that are there, five Bhagyas that were given, everybody is very happy. I was a bit disappointed. Why was I disappointed? There are eight crore people in the state of Karnataka. Eight crore people in the state of Karnataka. Roughly around two lakh families, assuming that every family has four members. Roughly around two crore families in the state of Karnataka. 90% of the families are below the poverty line. 1.8 crore families in the state of Karnataka are below the poverty line. students should fall into that particular category. Because the whole idea that is there is how can a nation develop if 90% of our population is below the poverty line? There is something fundamentally wrong in whatever is happening in our, in our country. We need to look at this particular thing very, very closely. And if we want to go far as a nation, then in the sense that we need to contribute to making sure that our youth are empowered with skills and knowledge, by which in the sense that they don't fall into those kind of categories. A simple task that I have for all the students who have joined our institution today, whatever fees that you are paying to join the course in PES, you should recover that fees in your first year earning in the company that you join. Simple target. Whatever fees that you are paying for your studies in PES, within the first year that you are going to get a job, you should recover the entire earning from that company. That is the quality of skill that we need to target about imparting in our own institution. Anything less than that is not acceptable at all. We need to reinvent ourselves. We need to look deep in what we are trying to do. What is it that we need to change so that our students are only at least going to get jobs that the entire cost of education is going to be recovered in one year of work after they graduate. The agenda for my presentation is going to be the six components, the vision of PES, the key performance indicators, the PESU differentiators, the self-actualization strategy that we have, the student code that you need to follow, and finally, some of the frequently asked questions that I will try to address during the course of this presentation. What I'll be doing today is more of a generic PES presentation. The next week after this activity is going to be over, you're going to be having your bootstrap activity in each department. The focus will be as to how some of the thoughts that we have as senior management is dovetailed into what actually happens in your respective programs. This is a generic outline. The guideline that has been given to your departments is this. They have their own strategies in terms of how they will implement the guidelines that has been given to them. The financial support that has got to be given and the administrative support to be given by the top management to make this happen has already been extended to the departments. So it is extremely important so that you get in line with whatever is going to be planned for you for the rest of the semester through the bootstrap activity that we are going to be having for the next one week before the actual classes are going to be starting on the 7th of August. The vision of PES is to create professionally superior and ethically strong global workforce. Around the time that you are going to be graduating, in our country, around 4 million graduates are going to be coming out. 4 million graduates are going to be coming out. How are you going to be different from whoever else is going to be graduating from so many universities and colleges that are across the country? Our job first is to try and see, can we make you better than your counterparts who are there in other institutions across the country? And that's what we are driving towards. Second component that we are looking at is, we need to have global competence in you. We can't prepare you for a job that is going to be there in Bangalore. We got to prepare you for a job that is going to be there for some other part of the world. The recent changes that has happened in the digital world today, it doesn't matter where you are working. You probably are going to be aspirants for global salaries in the, in the decades to come. If you want to get global salaries, you have to have global competencies. 
what are those global competencies that we are talking about, and that's how we prepare you to become a part of the global workforce. What are the skills that will make you global in terms of your capabilities? The third component that we long we emphasize on, you've got to be ethically strong. This is something that we keep on harping in our institution time and again. In life, there will be nobody who's going to be helping you in your journey other than yourself and your knowledge. If that is what is the path that you take, every single test, every single assignment, every single examination should be based on your own ability and merit and nothing short of that. No compromises at all. So keeping that in mind in the sense that every single thing in this campus is focused upon bringing the discipline in you in everything that we do. Please make sure that you follow all the instructions that are going to be passed on to you from time to time. So another question that will come in the uh, ISA 1. What is the vision of PES? To create professionally superior and ethically strong global workforce. No confusion insofar as our vision statement is concerned. The PES University today, what gives you an edge? There are 20,000 students who study in various programs, over 2,000 employees, 56 plus programs, and 40,000 alumni. Sometimes in the sense that you got to understand, the strength of the university is just not what you see here today. The strength of the university is also the level of amount of alumni that we have already in the marketplace. I'll give you a small example. Last year, for the head of the, for the addressing the students of the first year engineering program in this campus, we had Doshi Jaikumar, who came as the chief guest. Because it was a golden jubilee year, we said we'll call our, all our alumni, ask them to talk to them. Doshi Jaikumar graduated in the year 1996. He got the first rank in electronics, and today he's the chief information officer of British Telecom. This year, for our inauguration for the engineering school, the person whom we are trying to get to our engineering school is uh, Harish Dwarkanahalli. He also graduated in 1996 from the mechanical engineering program, and today he is the president of Wipro. So, and then in the sense that if you look at the highest paid employee of Flipkart, who has got a compensation of eight crores per annum, is again Makin Maheshwari, a student of information science and engineering department in, the, in our college itself, who graduated in the year 2000. So if we want a company to come on campus today, I don't need to call a company. I need to talk to my alumni, who is probably one of the senior guys in any of these companies that are there, saying that we have brilliant kids out here. Why don't you come and recruit? The challenge that I have as an institution today is with all that we have created for you now, are we creating somebody who is really exceptionally smart, digitally gifted, and a great communicator? These are the kinds of skills that people are looking out for, and in the sense that it becomes very, very important for us to see whether we can produce students of that particular ability who are going to be coming out from the portals of the university. A lot of people say that we want to be another PS institution. So when institutions come to me for advice, I say that if you can implement everything that we have in this slide, you can build an institution that is as good or even better than PES. These are the key performance indicators. What does the management look at whenever we look at uh, indicators by which we measure are we doing better or not? First is S stands for student. P stands for process, I stands for identity, R for research, I for infrastructure, and T for teachers. These are the six key performance indicators that we always monitor to see whether we are growing as an institution or not. Now, to kind of elaborate on all these six parameters, we have a slide for each one of these parameters. First thing is, this journey is very important to us. We should hire students with potential. We cannot take everybody and anybody who becomes a part of the PS University because that will not make sure that the quality of the student body will add value to the PS network. Good students build a good university. So the journey starts with enrolling students with potential. Second thing, whenever a student comes into our campus, every senior of yours should tell you, you are having a better experience than what we had. 
Next year, your juniors will tell you that we have better experience that you had. That is the story of PES. You ask the students who have graduated in the year 1992, they'll say, sir, such a wonderful college, we never had this when we graduated. The guys who graduated this year are saying that, sir, our juniors are going to have all these things, we never had all these things. Every pass out student from PES is always jealous of the junior batch that comes into PES. And that tradition will continue. The day somebody says, sir, sir, nothing has changed, that means I have stopped doing work. Every single day in PES, you will see change, you will treat transformation, you will see things that are meant to make the quality of student experience that much better. And the third component that is going to be there is we engage very aggressively with our alumni. Gone are those days in 1996 when the first company came for campus for recruitment, we hardly had around 13 companies come for recruitment, I mean six companies came for recruitment to hire a total of 13 students in engineering. Six companies, 13 students, was our first placement record. The highest number of companies that came to our campus was when COVID happened. 287 companies came to our campus and gave placements offer of 1,700 plus placement offers was made on campus. Now, all that I'm trying to say is this is how, what the journey is all about. You start small. It took us 25 years to build this momentum to get to where we are. I can only promise you this. When you are going to be presented for placement three years from now, 600 is not a number of companies. We can get any number of companies. The challenge is, are our students capable enough? Are they skilled enough? Are they presentable enough? That's the only challenge that we have internally, not the number of companies that are going to be coming into the campus for recruitment. So these are the formal platforms that we have in the institution, the amateur scientists, the real life heroes, Atma Trisha, Conquest Dar, PSU seniors, PESU Venture Labs, Crucible for Research and Innovation, the impact of engineering and technology on us, Order Ego, Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurships. These are all various things that happen in the campus. Some of you are going to be bamboozled with the amount of opportunities that are there. And it is extremely important for you to realize what is it that is happening in PES. Can you participate in all of them, some of them? Are you going to be good at a few activities? Can you participate? Can you lead? Can you follow? Some of these decisions are critical decisions that you need to take while you are going to be there in the university. This is another very significant process. We have what's called as a campus-wide quality improvement program. This is the first quality initiative that was taken up in PES when I came back in the year 1991. In Karnataka, when I came back and joined PES, there were 56 engineering colleges. We were ranked 54. If you don't get a seat in any engineering college in the state of Karnataka, 100% you would get a seat in PESIT. That is where the journey started. Today, in the sense that there are over 250 engineering colleges, out of the top five, two of them are both campuses of PES. PES University Ring Road Campus and PES University Electronic City Campus. And trust me in the sense that we take a lot of pride in that. To say that, no, it doesn't matter in the sense that we need to know where we are. We will know how to walk up that particular ladder and get to where we need to be. But what is very important to us at each point in time is we should benchmark ourselves against the best institutions in the country and continuously strive towards improving our practices to make the quality of student experience better. The second thing is called as a student academic support program. The idea is there is no tuition teachers for any of the subjects in PES. If you cannot get the solution within PES, you'll have the solution with good friends or in sitting in the library or special classes that are going to be taught by the anchor faculty members in the college. And that's what is the student academic support program. And the third component that we have is the gifted student development program. 5% of our students are always gifted. That was the traditional data. But today I say that 20% of my students are gifted. These gifted students require mentoring so that they can be charged up and pushed to the next level of competence. So as an organization, this particular program has been institutionalized. This is another process that is entrenched in each department. Another thing that is there is a lot of you, when you wanted to join an engineering college, it would be like, I want to be in IITs, or I want to be in NITs, or I want to be in some popular triple IT. So if you have landed up here, is it because you didn't get in any of those institutions you land up here is the question I ask students. 
So what is missing? So in case you want to be an institution, you want to be an institution that has an identity. PES also works towards establishing an identity for ourselves. We were Southeast Asia's first ISO 9002 certified institution. We are ranked number one in Karnataka by the Karnataka case, case of ranking for universities under five years. I think the ranking for universities now, we are now older than five years, is going to be out shortly. And we are going to be in the top two, top two, even in that particular ranking, with universities that are more than 25 years older to us in the ranking matrix. We are recognized as the TechU uh, phase two institution. 14 institutions in Karnataka were recognized under this CADA, and we are the only private institution to be recognized as a TechU phase two institution. Research at PES is going to be based on these three things, publications, patents, and proposals. The impact, we look at publish in high impact journals, innovate to patent, ensure higher grant success of proposals. To give you a small uh, idea regarding how things are growing, when we started focusing on research in the university, the publication per faculty members was 0.17. The last time when we looked at it, the publication per faculty in our institution has gone up to 1.37. Very few institutions in India have a publication uh, number of one, over one publication per faculty per year. That's what we've been able to achieve. Another thing that's going to be there is patents. We used to generally have one, two, or three patents a year. This Golden Jubilee year, we told our faculty members for the last three years, it's going to be a Golden Jubilee year. You need to focus. We need to target patents. We set a small target for our faculty members. You know what is the target? Golden Jubilee year, we should have 50 patents. 50 patents in the Golden Jubilee year. Trust me when I'm saying this particular thing, we will cross 50 patents this year. It will be the highest number of patents by any private university in the country in one single year, which is going to be accomplished this particular year. Ensure higher grant success for various projects that we are going to be doing, even that's going to be happening. Next, when we look at infrastructure, we looked at dedicated areas for supporting rigorous research and problem solving, digitally enabled classrooms and laboratories, state of art recreation and housing facilities. Post my presentation, you will have an opportunity to look around the campus, have a feel for what exactly is the kind of infrastructure that's going to be there. I can tell you this, I have seen more than 100 universities across the world. Every time I see anything good in any university, the only thought that comes to my mind is why is this not there in PES University? The ultimate goal of PES University to is to ensure that the finest infrastructure that could be available in any academic institution is going to be provided to the last student in PES University. Beyond that, there's not much that I can do. People can't complain to say, that, sir, we don't have even the place to do these kinds of things. You will have place, you will have guidance, you will have resources. Do you have it in you to push yourself to be the best that you can be? That's the only challenge that we're going to be pushing on you and nothing else than that. And the last component, because sometimes people say, sir, you put students there and the teachers are the last in your hierarchy. No, it's not true. The foundation of all good things is the faculty that we have in the institution. We can't build any good institution unless we have outstanding, committed, and passionate faculty. I am, we have lucked out there. I believe that majority of the faculty members in the campus are extremely passionate about what they're doing in the institution. And they're really committed to ensuring excellence in our student body. And a lot of kudos to them. The reason why we are able to do such things so aggressively and so well is because of the cooperation that we receive from each one of our faculty members. A faculty member's role in the university typically right now is 50% of the time it will be involved in teaching, 30% of the time it will be involved in research, and 20% of the time it's going to be involved in administration and mentoring. The new thing that mantra that we are also pushing across the university is how do we mentor our students to become better? I'll come to that a bit later. So some of the highlights before you're going to be going back home today, these are some of the things that you should go by. There's a thousand node assessment center because people always said, sir, you talk about world class. What is so world class? We want to see what is world class. If you go one, two flights up, okay, from this floor, two flights up on the left hand side, you will have, you will see 
the world's only assess thousand node assessment center. The world's, I'm not talking about India. There is no university in the world which has a thousand node assessment center. You can go and have a look at it. What is so good about this particular center is we have stopped the giving question papers in the print form. Question papers are going to be served live on the electronic form. Every single test or e exam that is going to be conducted in our center, there is multiple sets of question papers that are going to be there. The computer randomly generates the paper, selects the paper, and posts it at the time of examination. Every single student will have an app which you are going to be registered to. Your room number and your station in which you are going to be writing the test or examination will reach you the morning before the examination. Until such time, you don't even know which room, which seat you are going to be sitting in. And your question paper will be served on your station. Now, this has a lot of logistics. We don't, we don't get here just like that. Another thing, we have randomized all these question papers also. The first mock question paper that is going to be set will be set by the computer based on historical data that we have. And that mock question paper will be given to the anchor teacher to look at and try and see how we can improve on that particular thing in case it's out of syllabus or not. And that's how the paper is also going to be generated. So the entire process of assessment is a very sacred activity in the university. And you can have a look at how our assessment center is designed to do this. The next thing that we are also doing as an innovation to your group particularly is our assessments are going to be hybrid from now onwards, both ISAs as well as end semester examinations. All this while, only the end semester examinations was hybrid. From this year onwards, both the internal assess assessments as well as the end semester examinations are both hybrid. What do I mean by hybrid? A student can type an answer or write an answer. Both the options are going to be available for you. So if your handwriting is bad, you can type the answer. Don't worry, we won't judge you for your handwriting. You are there in a university because some of the students used to complain to their parents, Mark Salpa Kami Bantun and handwriting Sarayagilanta. That problem is not going to be there anymore. Your handwriting will not be an excuse for not performing in your tests or examinations. All our tests from henceforth are also going to be hybrid in nature, and that's going to be implemented from this session onwards. So this is a 1,000 node assessment center, which is again a USP of the university, and this is what's going to be happening there. Second thing is there's a place called as Silent Reflections. This is in the top floor of the B block. So this is a place wherein around 200 students can sit and study. The only condition that we have is you can take your bag, you can take uh, no refreshments. You can take your bag, you can study, but you should not open your mouth. That's why it's called a silent reflections. You have to sit there and study. Trust me, in a working day, if you go there to that in the campus, it's almost fully packed all the time. You can go to that particular place. If you want to talk just outside, there's an open area where you can sit and study and talk. But inside the silent reflection, you are supposed to maintain silence. Just outside that, you have a cafeteria also. If you have to slip out to have some refreshments, it's possible for you to do that. Quite a lot of very, very sincere and nice activities are conducted in these areas throughout the year. And over a period of time, you will start having some healthy habits in terms of how you can associate in working areas like this. This is PESU 52. If you turn around, you will see on the top floor those very well-lit rooms right behind you. That is called as PESU 52. The idea was in the 50th year, we wanted to conduct 50 hackathons every Saturday and Sunday. Most universities, we, PS University, by the way, we work only five days in a week. So if there is a holiday or something like that, we don't ask you to come on Saturday and Sunday. No, there are no makeup classes at all. Everything is planned in such a way it is going to be completed in five days in a week. But the college is open on Saturday and Sunday also. You'll be wondering, sir, if there's no classes that are there, why are you opening on Saturdays and Sundays? Every weekend, there is one hackathon or the other happening on campus. It is for those interested students who want to push the boundaries, test themselves out. There are various opportunities by which you can participate in n number of activities that are going to be happening on campus. And that's the reason why we keep these slots open on Saturdays and Sundays. 
So this is the cafeteria. Today you're going to be having lunch in this particular place. So let me see what time it is now. So lunch is going to be available for students from 1.45. Lunch is going to be available for parents from 1 o'clock. OK, so from 1 o'clock onwards in both the halls, in the MRD auditorium there and this particular auditorium here, you can go up. The cafeteria is open, and lunch coupons are already given to you. Parents can go and first finish your lunch so that it doesn't become too crowded. Even when you are having lunch, you can listen to me talking, because the same thing is coming there also. So you don't need to worry about trying to say, am I going to miss out on something in case I'm going to be having lunch in another place. So you see this interesting uh, video, uh, uh, television screens that are there in that. There are lots of thoughts that we have regarding why those television screens are going to be there. Just to sound you out in terms of the interesting things that we want to do, we are trying to have some facial recognition software. So when you are going to be passing by any of the screens that are going to be there, don't be shocked. If it recognizes your face and if it's birthday, your birthday wishes will come on those screens. Okay. So similarly, in the sense that if you're coming in a vehicle and then your vehicle is registered against your name, your speed is more than 20 kilometers, even that will come on the screen. The idea behind that is to congratulate students on various good things that they do and also caution students saying that these are things that you should not be doing. Ultimately, this is your institution. Everything that you do, you should take a lot of pride in. And in the sense that we would, you want to enjoy every moment of your stay out here. We are going to be a very digitally driven institution. Over a period of time, it will be getting much and much more invasive. It is not to do anything to deal with your internals in terms of data, but to look at how to enhance the quality of experience for generations of students who are going to be coming into the institution that we are focusing on. This is uh, PESU 52, uh, the theater, dance, and music studio. Right here, after the basketball court, we have the theater, dance, and music studio. The recreation team in PS is very, very active and extremely aggressive. So they always used to say, any time we want to jam or practice the music troupe, you move us from place to place. They say, this is too noisy, that is too noisy. And then every, every year, you give us a new room in which we want to function. At least in the new building, they said, please give us a permanent place where we can keep our equipment and jam whenever we want. So what we have created here is this studio. This is actually a photograph, not a visualization or something like that. For some of you, after you finish, if you just step out of this particular corner, you can go and see the TDM studio. It's a 180-seater that we have. Uh, lots of bands, the college classical band, the western band, and so many other groups that are going to be there will always be practicing various things that are there for various events. And the fact that the Department of Fine Arts has also active in our institution, there's a lot of scope for you to improve on the skills that you're going to be having. Adjacent to this particular theater, we have also created a lot of small rooms wherein if a student is going to be interested in learning a musical instrument also, those possibilities are going to be available for them to do in their college hours itself. That's also been planned for students. Uh, this is another one that is going to be there. If you go to the other corner of the same ground floor, this is a high-intensity workout room called as a spin studio. So some of you, you got to realize, uh, we are extremely worried about uh, how physically active you are because uh, we don't like the trend of people only looking at consuming so much of digital media all the time. There are lots of areas in this particular place, 2.5 lakh recreation center. This center is 2.5 lakh square feet. It has enormous amount of resources that are going to be there. You just need to find the time to go use these facilities. I will tell you this, if this was available in my college when I did my engineering, I would never go home. I would never go home. Why would I go home? Everything is available in this particular place. Fantastic libraries, fantastic floors area. And I'm telling you, even the change rooms that are there next to the gyms are extremely luxurious. The only thing that you need to do is make your mind up to say that you will make all these things work for you. That becomes very, very important. So this is the gym. Uh, my father started PES in a rented gym, gymkhana in Hanmannaga. The size of the gymkhana was 
20% of the gym that we have here. That's well, the whole of PA started 50 years back. All that I am trying to say is, we are so fortunate that such a foundation where it started off from gave us the strength to create something like this. And today with a lot of pride, that's why a lot of emphasis was there on creating a beautiful gymnasium for our students here. It's 25,000 square feet of area which is there. This is the aerobic section of the gym. There's a weight section also that's on the gym. So once you can finish the presentation, if you just step out, ground floor is the weight section and the first floor is the aerobic section. These are badminton courts. If you see to your left there, you see those red floorings that are there. These are the badminton courts that are there. Three badminton courts are there. And then quite a lot of students are wondering, sir, do we have to pay anything extra for it? Most of the facilities that are there, you don't pay extra for it. If at all you pay, you only pay for maintenance. The capital expenditure is already done. So you don't need to, if you want to change that, no. There is manpower that is going to be manned to coach you, train you, and all those things. For whatever is the recurring expenditure there, we are going to be looking at small reimbursement that is going to be done for interested students to pursue it seriously. But there are areas for which there is no fee at all. There's a small jungle gym that you can use, weights that you can work on, and then two shuttle courts that you can play, table tennis that you can use. All these things are not costing at all. It's all a part of the general infrastructure that's provided to the students. So this is another uh, basketball court. There are two squash courts that we also had. Recently, we conducted a squash tournament also in the sense that it was pretty interesting because we suddenly realized there are not too many students who play this particular game. So we kind of want to encourage people to take on this particular sport. Uh, we probably have the finest maintained cricket field outside of KSCA Stadium in Bangalore City. So if there's any cricketers here who want to pursue this particular sport seriously, including the nets, the coaching apparatus, and everything that is going to be there is fantastic. We have six sets of nets. We have two bowling machines. We have adequate number of coaches and lots of people involved, primarily because we have a very good sports management department, which is there in our institution. So this is our yoga studio, the first floor next to the gym. For those of you who want to improve their flexibility, if your gym is not going to be the place you want to spend time, in the sense that yoga studio, trust me, most of the faculty members are going to the yoga studio, and in the sense that dance aerobics are also done on a regular basis. So people are spending a lot more time in campus than ever in the past. So that was more of a highlight because just in case you're going to be walking around the campus, you'll be wondering where are all these things. It's, most of it is in the three floors here itself. So if you want to, if your parents are having their lunch, the students can go around. And when the students are having lunch, the parents can go around and look at this infrastructure which is right around you. Now people said when we became a university, why do you want to become a university? There is, PA, there is already a Bangalore University, there is already a VTU, uh, there is already uh, so many other universities in the country. What do you think that you want to achieve by becoming a PS University? We clearly said that some of the reasons why this university came into existence, we do not understand, but we pretty much know where exactly we wanted to be when we become a university. These are the six differentiators which are different with PS University when compared to other, any other university. Admissions, curriculum design, teaching learning process, assessment, exposure, and scholarships. These are the six things. Very important. What are the PESU differentiators? The question in that first ISA, okay? So these are the six things that we are talking about. Number one, all admissions to all programs by, now you know this, there is only one fee that we have. It's a national open merit admission in PES. There is no separate fees for Karnataka students, non-Karnataka students, or foreign nationals. Everybody in PES pay the same fee. As long as they have equivalent ability, we don't discriminate based on where they are from. Second, in our curriculum design, we benchmark our curriculum against the best in the business and to add value to what probably any other university does, we have special topics, major and minor concept, and experiential learning. A student, students who are there in, let us say, that uh, in uh, BBA, in the engineering program, can do minor in design. 
people who are going to be there in the law program can do a minor in psychology. Psychology students can do a minor in the law program or in the business school. Some of these flexibilities that was not available traditionally in schools are now much more possible because of the fact that we are a university. And then experiential learning. Every single teaching component or subject that is going to be taught in the university will have an edge, either a digital edge or an academic edge to make sure that you are going to be professionally superior in the ultimate degree that you are going to be getting in. That's how the curriculum has been designed. Another important part of the teaching learning process is what we call as the PESU Academy. There, are, there is a team of around 40 engineers only collecting data, presenting information, and making it ready to use for all the students of the university in this PESU Academy. So this is the format that they had last year. So suppose you had a subject. OK. I can't use the pointer, but let me just show you this. You have in each subject, this is a subject called as organizational psychology. The course units are going to be unit one, introduction to organization, personality and other elements, attitude and leadership, perception and group, leadership and more. These are the five unit breakups. So let us say that you go into any of these subjects that are going to be there topic wise. You are now in unit three. What is highlighted there is unit three, attitude and leadership. So if you look at it, introduction to attitude, components and formation of that, cognitive dissonation theory, all these are elements that are there. Audio visual summary, live videos, slides, notes, assignments, question banks, everything is going to be available to you in the day one of the class. So if a subject is going to be having 60 sessions, you will have a breakup that's going to be telling you what is going to be happening for every one of the 60 sessions. And so when an anchor teacher designs the syllabus, the details regarding what is going to be covered is going to be known to them. And to make sure that you are going to be better equipped, we'll give this information available to you in, in advance so that you are going to be better prepared when you're going to be coming to the classes. So you'll have live videos which are going to be played. This is the quality of slides that are there. That's the quality of faculty who are going to be like services that are going to be there. The videos are going to be of very high quality that you can watch on your personal smartphones also. In addition to that, uh, we have a $1 million budget for our center entrepreneurship cell, which is attached to the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Lots of students in various departments do various projects in this entrepreneurship cell. So in the sense that there are advanced and core courses that you can opt for as special topics in the entrepreneurship cell. You'll have VC exposure competitions that are going to be done, which you can be a part of. We have PESU Venture Labs also, industry professionals, student entrepreneurs, and scholars rub shoulders with each other. You can be a part of a larger team in case you like the idea and work in that particular group and develop your skills over a period of time. If you are an all-rounder, then your skills can be used for various companies that are going to be there in our startup center. These are some of the companies that are there in our startup center, Seminar Room, Fond, Abaya, Azert, Team Up. Uh, uh, Bay, Consumer, Frizzle, uh, Punarva. So these are all the various companies that are going to be there. So when you look at all the skills that are there in this particular hall, in, in the departments that you're in, there's a lot of synergies in terms of your abilities and where the fit-in is going to be there for any of these companies on campus. Now, there's a small tweak that we have done in the assessment from this year onwards. Last semester, we used to have five tests and classes used to go on, and then tests would be there in the same week when the classes are also going on. And the feedback from the students was, sir, that we are all so stressed on this entire thing, and we want to concentrate on studying, because a lot of people used to bunk the classes so that they could study for the test. So what we have done now is instead of having five units per subject, we have divided the subject into four units. The same five unit content has been recast into four units. So after the first and second unit is over, you will have one test. After the third and fourth unit is over, you will have the second test. On the dates in which you have the test, there is no classes. The whole week is test week. 
So if you have five subjects that are there, you'll have five tests, one test a day. That's the way it is going to be done. So that is, in a way, the sense that helps you people to consolidate learning. Next is the end semester examination is the one answer at a time principle. I'll get to it later. And then how the results are going to be declared. All results are going to be declared in time. Okay, to give an example, your last working day this semester is going to be 24th of December. So if you want to plan a vacation, you can take a vacation from 25th of December. The vacation is going to be for two weeks. The vacation is going to be for two weeks. The results of the final examination is ready with us by 31st of December. But we do not declare your results on 31st of December. Why? We want you to have a happy new year. The results of your examination are going to be given after the new year is over. Third or fourth of that particular month is when we are going to be declaring the results. Your results will be generally out after 14 days from your last examination. That's how the calendar of event works. And so this is how the program is. Now, these are the computer-based test interfaces that we talked about. So in the sense that you have the question, the answers are going to be given. Not all questions are multiple choice questions. Around 40% of the questions are going to be multiple choice. 60% of them are going to be subjective things in which you have to write the answer. This year onwards, it is going to be an hybrid mode, which means to say that you can write the answer or type the answer. Both the options are going to be given. Because students also gave us a feedback, sir, all our life we have been writing. Suddenly you ask us to type, draw figures and all those things. It's very time consuming. So then we said, all right, until you get used to the system, either you can type or you can write. Both this combination is over. After the test is going to be done, we scan your digital paper and then we are going to digitize the whole thing for evaluation purposes. It is more work from the back end side that is there, but if it means that it is going to help the quality of experience of a student, we want to go out and do that. So that's what is going to be done in our institution from this semester onwards. Okay. Now, this end semester assessment, OAT, OAT is one answer at a time. It's not open air theater. Okay. So what so one answer at a time. So if you look at this. Okay, if you look at this, you have question number one, two, three, four, and five, and A, B, C, D, and E. So this student has answered question 4A. When I'm a valuer, what happens is all 4A questions come to me at a time. What I will see in the beginning of the screen, it says question 4A is this question. Model answer is going to be there, and your answer is going to be there in the same screen. So if there are 1,000 students who are going to be answering 4A, all the 1,000 answers will come one below the other. The faculty does not know that who is the paper that is valuing, but at a time, he is going to be valuing one answer only. One answer at a time is what is valued. So when your paper goes for valuation in PES, your paper is valued by five different teachers. Each teacher values only one answer. If there are five units that are going to be there, unit one, one teacher, unit two, another teacher, unit three, the third teacher. When it goes for revaluation, suppose you're not happy with the result, 99% of our students don't have a problem with the results at all. 1% of them believe that they should get better marks. That particular revaluation paper goes to the anchor teacher to see whether there's any genuine reasons on the basis of which the child should be given more marks. But trust me, the errors in this particular system are close to 0%. Errors in the system is close to 0%. So in the sense that another thing, nowadays these students say that I did a very good examination, I don't know why I got less marks. That can never happen. If you come with your parents, they'll give you the digital paper for the rest of your life. The entire data that is going to be there of every examination, every test, every ESA is digitized and available and is available in a form of a CD. If you want, we can give it to you when you graduate a copy of that. 
because it's all it's entirely digitized there's no question of anything because sometimes you go my paper is lost it can never happen in ps which is all digitized it's available it's never lost if you want to retrieve the paper we can retrieve it immediately and if you want to show it to somebody else in our supervision we are we are allowable for that also all that i am trying to say is the process of examination and integrity of that particular thing is never going to be compromised in ps university it will be transparent and it is going to be strict and that is not going to be compromised on now this is another one that comes in in the pesu app itself it will tell you your this is how your semester 4 what was your internal marks what was your final marks what is the cost this is the subject is cost accounting in the fourth semester taxation it will give you data what is the final grade that you got how many people got better if you click on the graph that you have in that particular place you will also know how many students did better than you how many students did worse than you all that data is also going to be available to you you will not know who those students are but you will definitely get an idea from this so if you look at this test the summary your score that you got was 52 marks the average of the class was 39 marks and how many of them have got various marks ranges are out here so this will give you an idea with regarding to what exactly is your performance the total number of credits that you have got the number of credits that you have uh, the grade point cgpa that you have currently the grades that you have got in various subjects this is available to you of oh, faculty uh, parents please note i will come to this later you will be given an access code to this app also okay so by which you can log into the app and this information is going to be available to you lots of parents do a lot of investments on the children to make sure they have a smartphone and the parent themselves don't have a smartphone from now onwards i want you to be greedy parents please take the smartphone from your child give your useless phone to your daughter or son because i want you to be empowered you look at this particular tool access this particular information know exactly what is happening to your ward your participation does not end with 12 standard so this is another thing that we have the calendar of events is going to be there what happens on a monday what happens on a tuesday when is the holiday what is the time table schedules all these things are available on your app itself so you can have a copy of your app on your phone the parents can also know exactly what's happening in the semester on a regular basis in terms of exposure so our active semesters are going to be the odd semesters are going to be starting in august ending in december the even semester starts in mid jan and ends in may june july is always your summer term there is ample opportunities available for students to engage in various summer programs they can do mandatory internships and they can also participate in various get guest talks and networking activities now that this facility is available there's a lot of newer things that are planned also there are going to be lunch meeting with cxos of various companies there is going to be leadership meetings at conclaves that are going to be there two large seminar halls will be ready in the next 30 days if the capacity of the seminar halls is 500 students at a time so you will pretty much have a cxo meet on campus every week if somebody wants to listen to 50 cxos in a year you can listen to 50 cxos in ps university that is the level of Uh, experience that you are going to be having for somebody interested in learning from whatever is happening in the institution so this is something that all of you should look forward to 35 crore rupees has been given as of last year today they have updated it to 40 crores but i am talking about till last year this was what was given in ps university cnr rao scholarship let me give an example the students of the design program are paying a fee of 4 lakh rupees per annum the students of the design program are paying a fee of 4 lakh rupees per annum the total number of students in the design school is 150 students are there in the first year design program the top 20% of the students are going to be eligible for this scholarship which means 30 students out of 150 students are eligible for this scholarship 5% of them 7 and a half rounded off to 8 will get 50% of it back which means 2 lakh rupees will be given back to them and 
40% of it will be given back to them. 1 lakh 60 is going to be back, given back to 15% of the students. This is how the scholarship is going to be given. Getting recognition to be in the top 20% of the department is a very, very good recognition. Parents, please understand this. If your child is in the top 20%, then automatically a lot of good things are going to be happening to your world. So the emphasis on the department should be to try and see, can your child be in the top 20% of the class? Because another advantage you have, if you get the top 20%, then you can stop giving your children pocket money after that. Because some of our students are so smart, they have negotiated with the parents. Pocket money will continue. If I get this, this is additional money that I'm going to get. All that is whatever negotiations that you want to do is going to be fine. But all that I am trying to say is trying to get one of these recognitions is very, very important. You should try and achieve this. So third thing is distinction award. Any student who secures a grade point average in excess of 7.75, is going to be given a distinction award. This distinction award is a cash award of a thousand rupees that is going to be given to you. There is one condition for all these awards. What is this condition? All of you, one, should be bona fide students of PS University, number one, that I'm sure is already achieved. Two, you should have an account in Union Bank of India. Why Union Bank of India? We don't own Union Bank of India. That's the closest bank that we have to the college. All our accounts are there only. When you do a credit transfer from the institutional account to your accounts, it will happen in a second. We gave the entire list of students who got a distinction award and then sign off saying that please transfer it to their accounts and it will get done immediately. Many of the students have asked us this question, sir, why, for 1,000 rupees I don't want to open an account in Union Bank of India. I want to give some clarity. If you do not open an account and you don't want to take your 1,000 rupees, next semester, even if you get CNR Rao Award or MRD Award, we will not give it to you. We will give it to somebody in the row, the next person in the row who thinks that is a good thing that we are doing. Because if somebody is so arrogant to say that I do not want to open an account only to get a 1,000 rupee award, it reflects a very poor attitude. In fact, I've asked the vice chancellor, I want a meeting with only these students who refuse to open an account because I want to look at their faces and understand who are these people. I mean, what is happening to these guys? I mean, the sense that we want to give you recognition and you don't want to do that. I don't know how busy you are that this is not happening. If it is required, we will get the bank officials to come to your class and open an account for you. But what we are trying to say is sometimes we are, we are aghast at some of the situations that we are trying to deal with. When we are trying to say this is a good way of giving recognition to students and you should definitely cooperate with what we are doing. These awards are only given in the first and second year. We don't give this award in the final year. Student faculty, I mean students have asked us this also. Sir, why are you not giving this particular award in the final year? In the final year, this entire award amount has been given as stipends for various students involved in research in the department. So we have now announced a research scholarship worth of around stipend of around 30,000 rupees per month, up to 30,000 rupees per month, which will be given for students in the final year who are going to be engaged in various centers for excellence with roles that they need to play or if they're going to be doing in a, working in an industry, we will give a participative stipend from the institution also. So if you are not going to be selected by the industry and you're not going to be getting an internship, we can't help you with that. But if you're selected by the industry and if you're interning, in addition to the internship fund that they're going to be giving, the institution will also give you a stipend in your final year. And that's the reason why this incentive will be only in, in a three-year program for two years only in a four-year program for three years only because the final year one will be going towards stipends. Because last year, some students said, sir, we were not clear about this. I am making it clear now so that there's no confusion for this batch to say exactly how this works. In addition to that, there are lots of teaching assistantship, research assistantship, CNR, uh, corporate social responsibility assistantship, travel grants. These are all based on a function of merit and then in terms of uh, the ability for a person to excel in a responsibility given to them. 
So if you look at the number of people who have got various distinctions over a period of time, 771 in 2021, 882 in 2022, 976 in 2033, these are roughly around 20% of the students that we are talking about. So around 4,000 students are there, 4,000 and odd students, 20% of them would be around 976 people there. The other question keeps on coming up. Whenever we do an activity out here, they'll ask questions like trying to say, sir, are the things same in Electronic City campus and Ring Road campus? The things are 100% the same between the Electronic City campus and the Ring Road campus. Admission process, the same. Curriculum, same. Teaching, learning process, the same. Assessments, the same. Exposure, the same. Scholarships are the same. Placements are, are done together. Companies, uh, both companies have, uh, both campuses have combined placements. So it is going to be exactly the same. The other thing they were complaining was, sir, PESU 52 is there only in Ring Road campus. Please go to the Electronic City campus. There's a PESU 52 in that campus also. Then they said, entrepreneurship, CIE is not there in that campus. You go there, CIE is also there. Third thing they were saying is, sir, assessment center is not there. Sir, assessment center also go have a look at it. We have, we have a 700 node assessment center in that particular campus. Recreation facility, gym and other things, please go there. Their auditorium is much better than this campus and the gym is even better than this campus. So PS is not going to be differentiating the experiences in either of the campuses that are there. Please be rest assured, every single thing is going to be exactly the same. And the advantages that students in uh, the electro Electronic City campus have is the medical school is coming in out there. There's a huge lot of infrastructure that is coming in out there and especially for research interests and jobs that are going to be there. There's tremendous amount of opportunities for internship that is going to be available in our med school uh, premises itself. We are creating probably Bangalore's biggest hospital, a teaching hospital of 1,500 beds. Last time, when you remember when COVID happened in Bangalore, there were so many students of ours who had issues. Parents were not able to find hospital admissions and stuff like that. We arranged uh, ambulances from our hospital in Kuppam to move some of our parents from Bangalore to Kuppam so that they can be addressed. Even some faculty members went there because beds were available there. I wish it never happens again. But only one promise is if it happens again, we are better equipped. We have 1,500 beds in Bangalore only. Preferential admission will be given to PA students. Not that we want it, but all that I'm trying to say is, one of the days when you are here, all of you will be sent to our medical college for a checkup, okay? Not for any other thing, just a regular checkup to make sure that, uh, and it's free. The idea is to make sure that we have some data regarding you, some, and then in case there's any interventions that is going to be done, they can be done in a timely manner. So we come to the last part of the presentation. So we are now at uh, 1.10. This is a good time for uh, some of the parents in case they want to go up. Lunch is ready. So whoever are the ones to want to go up, they can do that. This is probably going to be taking the next uh, 30 minutes by the time we're going to be done with this. J.R.D. Tata made this statement saying, future belongs to the young. We must not only trust them with responsibility, but must trust it upon them while they're still young and full of energy, zest, hope, and even illusions. Why is this very important? Because uh, I've seen a generational shift. My father has been working for PS for the last 50 years. I've been in PS for 32 years now. When I came in, I looked at all the practices that are going in PES, and I always said, we need to change this, we need to change that, we need to push this, we need to augment this, we need to digitize this. All these kinds of inputs were given. Now, my children are grown, and then they are almost there in, in their 30s now, and they look at what I am doing, and these are, they say that these are the things that you should be doing better. Students don't understand this language anymore. You can't be so strict with the students. All these kinds of education is going to be coming our way. So we looked at this particular thing and tried and say that what is it that we can change as a university when we are turning the corner, turning around 50 years. So these are some of the things that we looked at saying that we are going to be looking at closely. There's a new strategy that we are talking about called as the agile strategy. This is self-actualization strategy. It's not a function of what we do in the classroom. Classroom is already covered. We, the theory is more based on trying to say that 
the maslow's hierarchy of needs talked about the ultimate necessity for any human being is for him or her to be successful in life what is the role of an institution in this entire journey the role of an institution is to facilitate every single student to succeed in his or her chosen path now we should not take on the role of defining what is that chosen path we can be playing a role of being a sounding board for their ambitions and inhibitions and over a period of time give them the path by which they can succeed so this is where we talked about trying to say what does agile stands for like in spirit a stands for awareness g for goal orientation i for initiative l for learnability and e for ethics the new mantra for success for a student who is going to be graduating from the portals of pes university is this agile strategy of empowering every student to succeed in their chosen path so awareness quite a lot of students complete their entire journey in the university without knowing what should they do when should they do it and why should they do it the first question that you all need to start off with this is saying that you need to have an awareness of what is your goal to achieve that particular goal in the sense that what should you do when should you do and why should you do it because after you finish your first semester if you want to fix something you can't because already the first semester is over everybody has to set a goal for each and every single semester i am this at the beginning of the semester this is where i want to see myself at the end of this particular semester to help you with this particular path all of you are going to be assigned mentors every one will meet your mentor for one hour not one hour sorry 45 minutes every month three months in the first semester three months in the second semester you will have a one on one with a mentor so all these goal setting exercises are going to be done wherein this exercise of trying to say what should you be doing when should you be doing and why should you be doing this is going to be answered data mining self firstly a mentor should also know what is the ability of the person you are mentoring a mentor student comes into you he has been assigned to you have you do you know what the strengths and abilities of the student is before you start telling that these are all the things that you are going to be doing so that is one is understanding their step and then the last part is the mentorship itself don't be surprised in the next one month if you get a call from the college don't be scared you will get a call both the mother and the father of every student who has joined the institution will get a call from the mentor in the next 30 days both the mother and the father of every student who has joined the institution will get a call in the next 30 days from the mentor what will happen when this call is going to go to you the conversation is going to go like this i'm warning you in advance only the call is going to be trying to say in the app which the students would have on their phone they would have given information this is my mother's mobile number this is my father's mobile number and this is a student's mobile number the mentor will give a call to what has been declared as the father's mobile number and give a call and say that i am the mentor of your ward i am mentoring your child i just want to verify whether this is your mobile number do you understand what i'm trying to say the first call is this your mobile number so you can say yes i confirm this is my mobile number and the mentor will tell the parent any time in case you have any issues with regarding to your ward in our institution you can have this number this is my number and this is my name is that okay nothing wrong with that right so the mentor will give a call to the father the next the mentor will give a call to the mother also because mother can't give the same number sir that number is with my husband no sorry mother should also have a number okay that number has got to be call the mother confirm that that is the number of the mother that should happen so that one both confirmations are done now you'll be asking this question why are you doing all these things i saw a boy speeding in the car last semester there is a small road hump that we have created near the uh, golden jubilee block this guy came so fast at a point in time all the four wheels of the car was in the air not two wheels all four wheels then i asked the guy in the security guard chase that guy and asked him to close the gate in the front 
and drag this boy out. And then in the sense that I asked him, what is wrong with you? There could be so many students on campus and they could have heard, been hurt by Sir, accidentally I pressed the accelerator. No, what do you mean accidentally you pressed the accelerator? I, I can't deal with it. If somebody does, accidentally you kill somebody. If you don't know how to use a vehicle, you should be prevented from allowing you to use, the, use that vehicle at all. You should not be given that vehicle. There are two cars that are smashed into the compound wall in the back entrance of our students only. Now, when these incidents happen, we get annoyed to try and say, don't we know how to manage even these small things that are there? A very simple, buy and all cars. Then problem won't arise only. You can't move inside this. That's not a solution to the problem. We have to find a way around this problem. Then I took the phone number. I took his app. I said, give me your name. So I have the app with me. In my app, if I log in to the PESU app and I type your name, it will give me all the details. Your father's name, your mother's name, your academic record. Uh, is there any problems that you have created in the past? All that will be available in that record. So I look at that, I gave a call to the father. Then I saw wrong number. That number does not exist. Then I called to the, the number, mother's number that was there. Then he told, sir, my mother does not have a number only. Then I said, Baba, there is some number that is entered here in the app. Let me call up this particular number. I called up, the mother picked up the phone. Then I said, Madam, I got this number from your son who was not driving his car according to expected norms. I want to understand in the sense that are you aware that he is driving a car first of all? So she said, no, sir, I told him not to take the car. He has taken the car today to the college. Next, I asked that particular person saying that this happened in the college and there is a number that I have got, that of his father. No, sir, that particular number was disconnected three years back. Yes, his father has a new number. Now, many a times you look at data, you, somebody has given us the data, that's what is there in the app. And then we look at the data as reliable data, we can't even relate to that particular thing. What are we trying to say? A verification is going to be done whenever a mentor is going to be addressing a student for the first time to see whether all the data in the app is correct or not. Don't go into the database, look at the app, that is going to be your interface. Now things have become so difficult for us. Now we are telling people, I have told the backend software team, I can't type the name and all the things that is there. I will just show the screen to the face of that guy. Then he should give me all the data of that particular chap. Facial recognition straight away. In the first one month, all of you are going to be called to the IT section that is going to be there. Like when you log into your iPhone, you give your facial thing that is there in multiple angles and all those things so that whenever you see it recognizes, we will recognize you. So from that facial recognition thing is going to be done and afterwards in the sense that if there's any mistake that is going to be there, we will not irritate you at all. We will just tag you and then we'll put that this is the kind of infraction that has been done and post it to the mentor. The mentor will deal with it. Because when you have 10,000 students on campus, it's extremely difficult for us to deal with every single issue that is going to be coming our way. But if you have only 20 students that you are mentoring, the number of people who are going to be involved in this will be one or two. 18 of them are going to be straight. So for two students, why should the entire institution suffer? So just move the problem there, type the problem. This boy did this particular mistake, post it, goes to the mentor directly. In the next mentor meeting, the mentor will take up that particular problem with the child. So what we are trying to say is, in the agile strategy that is going to be there, a lot of IT is going to be used. There's going to be a dashboard that is going to be created. Every time a meeting takes place, at the end of the meeting, it has got to be recorded, and then there is going to be a sign-off. Meeting took place from 2.15 to 3 o'clock. So the idea behind that is that we want to have friendlier relationships that are going to be there between teacher and the students. So this is what we are talking about, trying to say awareness is that part of it. The second thing that we want to do through this mentorship is goal orientation in Agile. First is, when a student comes into the college, it's fine. A lot of people said you have to be successful in life, you have to get a job, all these things. There are larger goals. These are the things that could happen to you. You probably want to go for higher studies. You want to start your own business or you want to get a job. 
these are probably the three things that, want, that you want to happen by the end of your three-year journey with us. How do we facilitate this? If somebody says, I want all the three, I want to go get into IIM, and in the sense that, sir, how do I prepare for it? Or in the sense that you're going to be saying, I want to set up my own business at the end of this journey, what are the skills I need to have for it? Or somebody says that I want a job which is more than six lakh rupees per annum minimum, what do I need to do for this particular thing? So the mentor is going to be asking, based upon your goals, what all are the things that you need to do in the semester? Simple thing, mentor is going to tell you, attend all classes. All mentors will tell you, please attend all classes. Because you have paid 100% of the fee, why should you attend 85% of the time? We are not asked charging you lesser, lesser number of classes, lesser UFP. You are paying 100% of the fee, attend the full classes, all classes, all subjects. Second question that is going to be asked is, if you have to study, without studying, how can you get marks in the exam? The first thing that is going to be asked whenever a company comes for recruitment is, shortlist all the candidates who have a grade point average in excess of 6.75. What is 6.75? 60% in their exam. If you don't get 6.75, the companies are not going to be shortlisting you for the interview process only. If you don't get 6.75, the faculty should at least bring it to their notice. So that the awareness is going to be there. How the classes attend 6.75, grade point. Then you'll ask the question, if I have to get 6.75, madam, how should I study? I hope that question you will ask. Please ask this question. Otherwise, the mentor is going to go be a mental wreck there only. The journey starts off with simple things. Do you have to study two hours a day? Do you have to study three hours a day? My theory is something like this. There are seven days in a week. Seven into three is 21 hours. You should at least study for 21 hours in a week. Or I'll give you one hour discount. 20 hours in a week you have to study. Other than coming to the college, at home, you have to study for 20 hours. Every working day in the college, you study for two hours. 10 hours is going to be done. Saturday and Sunday, you study for five, five hours. If you have that discipline, then a lot of good things will happen to you. You don't need to do magic. You don't need to move the world. You just need to study for two hours a day. And whenever there's a holiday, five hours a day. If that mental formula is there, a lot of things will work. What will the mentor do? Please do one thing, maintain a diary. I want you to write down every day what, how many hours you have studied, what did you study for those two hours. I can't monitor it. Parents are not asking these questions. Who should ask these questions? The mentor will ask the question. You are not met for the last one month because they'll meet only once a month. In the last one month, you should have done 80 hours of study. Show me 80 hours of study. If you are not getting marks, if you are not studied, then there is a correlation there only. You're not studied, that's why you're not getting marks. Quite often people say that he is not getting marks. First, I want to verify another data. Precursor to that data is, have you studied or not? And everybody studies during the time of examinations. So people tell me, if you want to be ahead of competition, world over, all students study during the time of examination. If you want to do better than your competition, you have to study when there are no examinations. It's a very simple logic, but then there is a problem in people understanding that this is the way you go about maximizing the opportunities that are going to be there for you. It's not very difficult. It's so difficult for you to study for 12th standard, you have studied so hard. Can you not study for two hours a day? We are just asking you to study two hours a day and on a holiday, five hours a day. That's all that we are saying. If you do that, trust me, you will do famously well. You will do famously well. 20 hours a week, you will do famously well. But you have to do it every single week, not during the time of examination. Every single day, you got to say, yes, I'm going to put in my 20 hours. That's what's going to be there. So depending upon that number of hours, that is one. So once you get them to study, once you say, give them small targets. First semester exam, the boy has got 7.0. Don't scold him. Next semester, you tell him, Baba, we'll set a goal for yourself. It should be 7.5 this semester. 7.5, no failures. 7.5 is the transition. Somebody has got 8, push him to 8.5. The role of the mentor is to give that incremental milestones that a student should be able to achieve. And then, automatically, good things will start happening to the student. So the whole job is of the mentorship is to push them towards a goal. 
and then slowly evolve a strategy by which the child becomes better and more confident. Then look at that in the last one month, they should ask, what are all the activities that you participated in the campus outside the classroom activity? There were so many hackathons that take place. There are so many CXO meets that took place. There are so many CSR activities that you take place. Did you participate in any of them? If those questions are going to be asked, somebody will say, because you are going to be asking the question, at least you will go and do that particular activity and participate. One of the common requirements today for success is you have to be digitally savvy. Number two, you have to be a great communicator. No compromises on that at all. Doesn't, doesn't matter which department you are studying in. If you are a good communicator, if you are digitally savvy, then automatically in the sense a lot of doors are going to be opening for you. Now, you go to the third component that is there in Agile in terms of initiatives. Summer programs, you have a two-month window. Some of you will say, for two-month window that is there, I'll take a holiday, sir. I've had enough of the university. Ten months, I've followed everything that you have said. Two months, I don't even talk, want to talk about studies. I'm saying, next three, four years, you only talk about studies. In summer, one of the simple things I'm asking you to do is find a place so that even if you don't get paid, a place that will make you work from nine to five. Eight hours, if there's a father's business that is going to be there, go sit in that shop at eight o'clock in the morning and be there till four o'clock in the evening. Lot of things you will learn in life. Recently, I met a person uh, who did his master's in computer science from the US. His parents were there in the hospitality business. And this boy, after doing computer science, he said that, I want, I like that industry better. So the father said, if you want to be there in my business, the first six months, I want you to work in the kitchen. Six months, he said, I want you to work in the kitchen. I'm not interested in you running the business. First six months in the kitchen. Then next six months, he said, you should be in serving. The next six months, you should be in the counter, where you're going to be generating the bills. And then I will talk to you and find out whether you still want to be in this profession or not. What I am trying to say is, all your parents go through a lot, lot of hardships to get the, where they are in life. But you really don't even appreciate the trouble that they are going through in every... given to me. I did workshop, I did engineering drawing, I taught engineering mechanics, I taught uh, uh, industrial management, I taught uh, strength of materials. So the question that comes in is that every single thing that it, I have done valuations, I have done invigilations, I have done valuations in other colleges. I, the idea behind it is if you want to be in your profession, you need to understand all aspects of that particular profession. Otherwise, how are you going to understand this problem? If a teacher comes and tells me that I'm not able to do this particular thing, I should be able to relate to the problem that the child's teacher is talking about. I don't have time for this. I can't do this particular thing. So it is very, very important that you take this initiative. Very, very important. If your resume, every semester, your resume should be there. When you started the journey in PS, how does your resume look like? End of first semester, your mentor should say how your resume has improved from what it was to what it is. Then end of second semester, what is the change in your resume? Every single sem semester, you have to have this. I have a small advice to students. You all have a smartphone, right? So turn the smartphone around, do a small recording. The question that you're going to be answering yourself is, tell me something about yourself. That is the question. The question is, tell me something about yourself. And that has got to be a 90 second clip. Without worrying too much, start talking for 90 seconds, record it. I will tell you one thing, 90% of you cannot speak for 90 seconds. 90% of you cannot speak for 90 seconds on a video mode. That is my guarantee. Even without you, test it out, no problem. You challenge me, I will challenge you to that. 90 second video recording yourself. And then, amongst the ones who are recorded, 90% of you will not like what you saw. 
you will not like, is this me? I mean, this is, I thought I was so impressive and in the sense a great communicator, I, am, I can just walk around the park, do things. No, nothing is going to happen. That is the reality check. And start doing it at the end of each semester to see whether that has improved. A very small litmus test whether your communication skills has improved or not will be by an activity like this. The mentor should make them do it. First mentor meeting, tell me something about yourself, you should record that person. And then say, this is what you are at the beginning of the semester. I want to see, is there any change that is going to be happening to you by the end of the semester? The mentor should ask, outside of academics, how many other things have you done in the college? What are all the activities that you have participated in? Which clubs have you, are you a part of? How many hackathons that you participate? How many study-a-thons that you participate in? So all these things are going to be data by which you are going to be fortifying the ability of every student who is going to be there in the university. So participating in workshops, competitions, internships, professional memberships, there are lots of summer courses that are done on campus. Registering for the courses is also going to be important. Learnability. See, one of the things that we want to do as a university is, every time you want to learn something, you should not come to a university. Suddenly, AI ML is very important. So I should go and join to a university, get a degree, get a certificate. That's the only way I want to learn. No. You should say the best teacher is available already on YouTube. The best content is already available free on the internet. What is missing is, how are you learning? Given this particular resource, can you not learn on your own? Stanford has put all its material there. IITs have put all its material there. Columbia has put all its material there. Everything is free access, open access. Google has a certification program that is there. Even without an engineering degree, you can get a certification and get a job in Google. So why do you want to join a university at all? The challenge that you have today is very different from the challenges that we had today, uh, yesterday. Because we all looked at ourselves and said, oh, if we had all these things, we would have done so well. I don't know. Because we didn't have these distractions. When I was there at your age, at 18 years of age, after finishing my 12th standard, or 17 when I finished my 12th then, there was no TV in our house. There was no mobile phone. There was no internet. Then you'll be wondering, how did you ever live? For this generation, which has all the things that are going for them, they'll just say, you're so old, sir, you can't even relate to us, you forget about it. The idea that we are trying to say is that now that you have all these distractions, you need to focus on yourself, put the distraction aside. The morning the speaker talked about the time, they say that only 4% of your mind is working on what you are capable of doing, achieving. There's a whole lot of things that has been clogged by other distractions that you have. If you can focus on how to learn, it will help a lot. At the end of your three-year journey, people are going to be asking, you would have done around 30 courses. Are you good in three courses? In 30 courses, are you good in three courses? What are those three courses? Is there a specific domain? Is there a core skill that you have? Did you get an S grade in those three courses? These are the questions that you need to answer. That's your core area. In those three subjects that you got an S grade, if I give a real-time problem that is there, do you know how to apply it to a real-time problem? I got an S grade in this course, but I do not know how to apply that particular knowledge to a real-time problem that I have. Here is a case study that is there. You have learned this thing. Can you apply that particular learning to this case study to solve this particular problem? So application of whatever you have learned is becoming very important. And then how do you prove that you are, you are good at what you have done? That's where your publications come into place. One of the things that we have made mandatory is every single student, by the time he or she graduates, should at least publish one conference paper. If you do not publish at least one conference paper, we will not allow you to graduate. So start working from that thought. How do I go about publishing work? How do I start with what my core areas are? Where are my skills that are going to be there? How do I get to acquire this particular knowledge? How do I network with people? All these things are what should help you in terms of how the university should help you with opportunities. Then the last slide in so far the new strategy is concerned is ethics. Ethics is for me is a bunch of habits to start with. Getting up in the morning is very important. Okay? I get up in the morning every day at 5.35. 
it doesn't matter whether I have work to do, no work to do, 5.35, I have to get up. My alarm is always at 5.32. Most of the time, I'm up by 5.30 because I know the alarm will ring at 5.35. One, when I can get up at 5.35 and I'm 56 years old, I can get up at 5.35. So there's no reason why in the sense that people can't get up early. I'm, I'm a, not a morning person. I don't know what it is. Whether if it's morning or night, it doesn't matter. What person are you? Sometimes I wonder. I don't even know what kind of person you are. There are people who are staying in the hostel who have a problem coming into the class at 8.15 in the morning. I don't even understand, like, how can I relate to them at all? So habits are something like I tell people, if you were to, there are some hostel rooms are like this. Some hostel rooms have an attached bathroom. Some hostel rooms have a common toilet facilities that are available. If you get up at 5.30 in the morning, the cleanest toilets are going to be available to you. Everything cleaned up, everything fresh and clean. You go at 8 o'clock, that whole place will be a mess because everybody would have used it by that time. So if I were to be a hostelite, I will get up at 5 o'clock. Because that's the time when the resources are going to be available to the maximum. So similarly, in the sense that if you want to do anything better and you want your quality of life to morning when people come to the college, college starts at 8.15. 7.45, not a single student is seen on campus. 7.45, nobody. 8 o'clock, 5% of the students come. 8.10 to 8.15, 90% come. What is wrong with you guys? Can you not come 15 minutes early? The whole place is going to be empty. In front of the lifts, they'll be standing as if they're handicapped people. They're, and some of the students, their classroom is in the second floor, and they're standing in front of the lift. Whenever I see that, I go stand in front of the lift saying that no entry for you. Climb the stairs. So sometimes habits are important. I have my mobile phone, I have my data of the number of steps that I walked for the last 10 years. My average steps per day is 16 and a half thousand steps a day. Average steps is 16 and a half thousand per day is the average steps. And by the way, if you walk this floor, you, there's a walking track there. That's, if you walk one round, it is 300 steps. If you walk one round, it is 300 steps. I keep telling my faculty members, whenever you have time, do five rounds. One and a half kilometers, you done. What is very, very important for us to do is understand that the way we do things itself, you start cultivating these habits. Whenever you see me, even in social circles, when I park a car, I park a car slightly away. Why? Because I can walk up to that particular place and I can add on to some more steps that way. It is just habits. I'm not giving my example that way. I think this is something you can relate to. Habits are very, very important. Second thing, integrity. See, today they're saying with AI, ML, and all these things that is there, assignments, I've told faculty members, how do you know a student has copied or not? Sir, it's a big problem. We had to look at Turnitin. We see how much percentage of copying. He has copied. We give a zero to him. Then he will get depressed. Then the mentor will have more problems. The mentor will also have to go to a psychologist after that. So I'm just trying to say the whole cycle of trying to improve the quality of experience is putting the whole system under tremendous pressure. So how are we going to be dealing with this particular era? We are trying to tell people, yes, these are the things that you need to do. So we said from now onwards, we'll not give assignments. In the college itself, we'll make them sit for four hours. We'll give them a book. We'll give them an assignment. In front of us, they have to do it. It's like nobody is does, does that. But we say that if this is the reality of how we need to deal with our students, we'll make them sit in the classroom, we'll hang around, and then tell them, please sit in that particular place. Here is a book, here is the assignment, solve it and go. We'll do uh, problem-solving sessions, workshops on various things, and that's how we're going to be creative. Integrity of a process is something that you all have to uh, consciously make an effort. If you copy somebody's work and you get out of out, I, you know for the rest of your life that you are not as intelligent as that guy. You should take a lot of pride in what you know and not what your neighbor knows. There is this fear, but I, when I see some of the faculty who come from U.S. universities and who talk about trying to say that there's a lot of issues that we have with Indian students copying, it burns my blood. 
it boils my blood to the extent where I just tell those people, how can they make a comment like that? If somebody says that a student of PES is involved in any copying that is there, it is not at all acceptable to me. Why? Have we not, have done this orientation for the last 31 years. I've done this orientation for the last 31 years. I've talked about integrity. I've talked about ethics. I've talked about habits. I've talked about rules and regulations. What's the right thing to do? And you still have this particular case that is going to be there that somebody is going to be copying. It is absolutely unacceptable. We have to draw a line. I mean, in the sense that it's very sad that some of the times that our intentions are kind of lost. We don't have any other purpose. We want to make sure our students are really gifted and really good. And trust me, you ask any person in a company who has hired a PA student, he will say that, sir, your students are the best that we have in Bangalore. Ask any senior leadership in any company in the, st in the, in the, in the uh, state of Karnataka, they will say that PA students are the best students to have. That's the credibility of these alumni who have graduated from this particular place. How can we build that? How can we bring that down? The last is time and money, okay, in terms of habits. This is my pet slide, I mean pet point in the slide. Lot of people attribute all good things to PES. I say, please don't give us so much credit at all. I'll give you the theory of this. The total number of subjects that we have in a semester is five subjects. In a semester is five subjects and two laboratories, that's what we have. 22 credits is the total number of credits that we talked about. Around 24 hours of contact is what we have in a week. 24 hours of contact is all that we have in a week. What is 24 hours? One day. Equivalent in the whole week, the number of hours wherein a teacher is in contact with a student is only 24 hours. In a semester, we teach you only for 13 weeks. One week is holiday, two weeks is test, and the rest is final examination. We have a 17-week calendar, 13 weeks of classes, two weeks of test, 15 weeks. One week is going to be going for preparation holidays. So that is uh, 16, and two weeks of examinations. That's done, two weeks of holidays. In 20 weeks, the whole thing is done. You are coming only for 13 weeks. 13 into 24 hours is going to be 13 days. Odd semester, 13 days. Even semester, 13 days. 30, 20, 13 plus 13, 26 days. Out of 365 days, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am talking to you in a classroom environment only for 26 days. The rest of the time, you are not interacting with me. You are doing a test, you are doing an examination, you are doing an assignment, you are with your friends, you are with your parents, or you are doing whatever you are doing. You are sleeping, you are traveling, you are watching TV, whatever. But my, my time spent with you is out of 26 out of 365 days, which is less than 10% of the time. How do you say that every influence that has happened to you is because of my institution? This is the truth of every institution in the world. You go to an IIT, you go to an MIT, you go to a Stanford, you go to an IIM, it is the same thing. The amount of time that you actually participate, where a supervisor is looking at the work that you're doing, is restricted to less than 10% of your time in life. Yes, gentlemen, so time is something that you are controlling, and you have to anchor that particular thing properly. How does it work for you? Make that work for you. Don't blame the institution. The institution will give you a structure. If somebody wants to find a fault in what I'm trying to say, please point it out to me. I'll be here during lunchtime. No, Professor Jawahar, what you have said is wrong. It's not true. Because that's all that we are trying to do with you. That's the case. We are not even spending 10% of the time with you. Next is money. Only in India, probably, or maybe a few other Asian countries, the cost of educating you in an undergraduate program is funded by your parents. Most places in the world, you have to take loan from the bank. Most places in the world, you are outside the house. Uh, we had this Gurumurthy, who is there, a very eminent economist that's going to be there. You can look at his YouTube videos. He says the number of people in an Indian family generally is around five people. The American people, the number of people in a household is two. 
because there are a lot of single homes and all these combinations, people moving out of the house. It's so good that we have five people in a family because if we are going to be a consumer, cons consuming economy like America, India can't afford it at all. We need to build two and a half times the amount of infrastructure that we have because more homes are required and stuff like that. When I looked at that particular example, one of the things is, even Joe Biden has been talking about this problem recently, saying that there's $2 trillion of educational debt that needs to be written off in that particular country. India doesn't have that particular problem. Why? Because parents are paying for education. You know, there is this major mistake that we are doing because of the fact that we are fund funding education of our children. Our children are not realizing the value of what you are doing for them. It is my theory. The reason is, let us say, I keep telling this, this is what I tell people. A PA student, the mentor should ask this. My request to the mentor is my pet project. On the side, please ask. Our pro-chancellor has said that he has this particular one-liner he wants to ask. A student who has joined the institution, you, along with the diary wherein you have studied, you should say, next column, I studied for two hours. What did you study for? Then, next column, I spent 50 rupees, 100 rupees, 200 rupees. Today, how much did you spend? Because he didn't earn that money. My parents gave me 200 rupees, I spent it on something. No problem. But you have to tell, first day, fees for first year, 2 lakh rupees. I owe my parents 2 lakh rupees. Write down, I owe my parents 2 lakh rupees. Next day, you take 50 rupees. I owe my parents 2 lakh 50 rupees. Next day, 100 rupees. I owe my parent 2 lakh 150 rupees. Keep writing that particular thing that is there. I can tell you that will teach you the value of money. All that you have in the mind, your parents don't want the money back. Do any of the parents want that money back? No, they don't want it back. But they want you to know that it costs money for whatever is happening. There are colleges that you can join wherein the fees is zero. We can go to a government college also. Why are you coming to our university and paying so much fees? You want this exposure. You want all the good things to happen to you. So start writing this particular thing. And I remember this boy. I gave you this example of boy, Doshi Jai Kumar, right? Doshi Jai Kumar, when he joined our institution in 1992 and graduated in 1996, he is a Marwadi boy. I respect him a lot, a lot. You know what he said in those days? The fees for getting into the electronics program in the engineering college in those days was 50,000 rupees. 50,000, it is in the management quota. So he said, sir, when I finish with the engineering, I would have spent 2 lakh rupees. 50,000 into four years is 2 lakh rupees. Then I said, I have to at least, he said, in our community that is there, they had to put at least 2% interest on it per month. That's what he was talking about. And he said, by the time I finish, my total investment on education in the four-year time, including the cost of money, he had done his calculation, is going to be around 6 lakh rupees, including cost of books and hostel and all these things. He had calculated everything. Sir, this is what my parents have spent on me. He said, if I get my first job, if I get my first job, it should at least give me 2% return on the investment that they have made on me. That boy... is about money is not a bad habit. It is not a bad habit. Regardless of how much ever money you have, if your children do not know the value of money that is going to be there, how are you going to be instilling these kind of thoughts in him? How do you get them to be frugal in what they are going to be spending in whatever they are going to be doing? And I go back to the last point, that is the habits. I only want one promise from all students here. Please don't smoke do drugs or consume alcohol unless you have earned your own money. If you are already starting doing this, sorry, I can't help that. But the reason I am trying to say this is, if you are able to postpone taking those decisions until you are mature enough to take those decisions, you will probably never do it. You will probably never do it. That's the only thing that I am pushing you to do, to try and see 
just be mature enough that whenever you do something, you know what you're doing and you're not doing it from your parents' money. You have earned it, you have that spare income and that's the reason why you're going ahead and doing it. Okay, so that concludes the last part, that's the Agile strategy. Most of the things that we talked in the Agile strategy are all in your control. There's nothing that happens in the college. College does activities. It's a code of conduct that you should believe in. That's what is important. Now, you will have seen this uh, mascot all over the campus, and you will be seeing this elephant all over. This is our pet mascot, Jago. So Jago, awake, arise, and there's a new beginning. The end of the journey, we want to make sure that our students are approachable, dependable, wise, determined, and strong. These are the attributes of an elephant, OK? So what we are trying to say is, yes, you should be all this. And that is very important for us. There's a student code, which we are very infamous for. The way you present yourself makes an impression. So your attire and presence, in the sense that please do the things that you're expected of you in being a good university. The discipline that you follow, rules and regulations are not done just sort of in haste. There's a lot of understanding that has happened over decades, and that's how these rules and regulations have come up with. Declaration forms, when we ask you to sign any document, don't blindly sign that document. Go through the contents of that particular document. Understand what we are asking you to commit to, and then only sign those documents. Whatever is going to be there on your mobile or social media, you are responsible for it. You can't say somebody hacked into my password. I did this particular thing. I can't be held responsible. No. Please understand one thing. Everybody will have a digital signature. Regardless of your best intentions of you having done something wrong, you cannot completely erase a digital signature. You will somehow be caught, and you are going to be held responsible for whatever actions that are going to be taken after that particular thing. Please be aware of this. Please be aware of the fact that there is no ragging officially or unofficially in this organization. If there's any such indications that are going to be there, please inform your mentor immediately. Okay, so there's no delay in that particular thing so that we can take action on that. You are not allowed to smoke, drink, or do drugs in and around campus. So that's not allowed at all. Hostel etiquette is also, there are rules that are there when you're a part of the hostel saying that do's and don'ts, please follow those instructions rigorously. So in the sense that diligently, because these are going to be very important. Placements, if you are caught copying, either in an assignment, or in the sense of a test or an examination, you are you're going to be red flag. What does a red flag mean? A red flag means no recommendation letter will be given to you for higher education. Number two, you will not be allowed to participate in any campus placements. And no references are going to be given for anybody for anything in future in case you're going to be red flag. So please be aware of this particular thing. Very, very important in placements, uh, there is an elaborate procedure before placements happen. We are going to be communicating what exactly are we going to be doing, and we need to participate with that. Uh, if you go to the website, there's an update that's going to be up by 15th of August. It'll give you details of accommodation, transportation, and other things. There's a very interesting activity that has been planned for you called as bootstrap, which is a regular thing that happens before the regular academic session starts on the 7th of August. Uh, it's a one-week activity. Your department has spent a lot of time in the last fortnight designing interesting games and activities for you so that you can get to know the other people in your department, your faculty, as well as the way to get the best out of the things that are there in your department. So please participate at, participate at it wholeheartedly. With these few words, uh, thank you very much for the patient listening and welcome uh, all of you again to PES and hope you have a great time with us. Uh, I'm, if there are any questions, don't worry. Your mentors and your departmental heads will be able to clarify any specific questions that you're going to be having. Uh, lunch has been arranged. Uh, people can go in leisurely. It'll be there till 3 o'clock. You don't need to crowd the place. It's right here. Uh, you see those people on the top? They're the ones who have probably eaten already. Okay. So just go up there and then spend some time. And then uh, any further questions, I'll be able to answer you later on. Thank you very much.
माइक नहीं थैंक यू सो मच ऑल स्टूडेंट्स